Let's settle for the news now. The National Labour Commission has directed the three teacher unions to call off their strike and return to the negotiation table with the government. For days now, academic activities have halted as the unions oppose the appointment of Dr. Eric Nkansai as Director General of the Ghana Education Service. After attempts to convince the teachers to reverse their decision failed, government decided to involve the National Labour Commission. Rija Kojanyako monitored the meeting as, and has more on this. Here, the National Labour Commission, the meeting has ended. The National Labour Commission met the three teacher unions and government. The government side was headed by the Deputy Employment and Labour Relations Minister, Bright Rekubrobe, and the three teacher unions were ably represented. So we saw the NAT General Secretary, Thomas Musa. We also saw Angel Kabanu, as well as a representative of the concerned teachers. Now, when the meeting came to a close, the NLC directed the three teacher unions to immediately call off the strike and then return to the negotiation table with government on the issues that they have raised. They raised two pertinent issues. One was on the appointment of the Director General of the Ghana Education Service. The second was the continuous stay of the Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service. And so the Commission has taken a decision and has directed that they call off the strike immediately. We've been interacting with the Executive Secretary of the National Labour Commission, Ofosu Asamoah. The Commission saw reason that they had something that they could complain of, but they have to engage with the Ministry. So they have been given one week to engage with government on the two issues that they raised. That is the appointment of Dr. Nkansa, that's Eric Nkansa as um, Director General of GES, and then the extension of um, time for the Deputy Director General, who after his retirement, he has been given extension to be in office. Mm. Now, beyond the strike, if the teacher is not going to call up, what will you do? Will you go to court, seek court intervention? They will call off. That is why it was adjourned for one week. What word did they give you before walking out of the meeting? We do not take word from people whether they will comply or not. This is an institution. We give directive, and when we give directive, we expect that people will comply. It is only when we fail to comply that we may take the next step. But in a period of one week, at least they give us assurance. They give us all the assurance yeah, to comply. To yes. The government side, uh, after um, the directive of the National Labour Commission, had it to say. So we've been speaking with Bright Rekubrobe, the Deputy Minister of Employment and Labour Relations. The pretextuary teacher unions raised some concerns and we engaged them for two days and we have been here. Our main contention was that whatever the issues were, we could discuss them if they were not on strike. Uh, they also told their side of story. The verdict today is that uh, the unions did not follow the proper way, the, 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 the right channels before they embarked on the strike. And therefore, they have been asked to go and call off the strike immediately and for also the government side to continue to engage them on their two main issues that they brought, that is the appointment uh, of the new DG and the extension of contract for the deputy DG. So we, the government side, will go from here and engage them and report back a week today, that's the 16th of November 2022. Should we go home thinking that you would uh, be meeting them on this, um, knowing very well that they raised concerns and then they did not get any hearing until they called the strike? Uh, you should go home in the full optimism that teaching and learning would go on. And then the engagement of the unions will also go on. At the end of the day, there will be a win-win situation. We are coming back a week today to report on the outcomes. Now, the teacher unions, I mean, when they got out of the meeting, uh, did not grant any interview to the media. We are yet to hear their side of the matter, whether they will comply with a directive by the National Labour Commission or not. We are waiting for the outcome of the caucus meeting uh, they left uh, to hold. From the National Labour Commission in Accra, my name is Richard Kwejenyaku for Joy News.
Well, in Techiman, some parents are worried about the presence of school-going children on the streets due to the strike. Anna Sabit reports. Since the strike action, uh, you know, declared by three teacher unions across the country on Monday, scenes of school-going kids here at the Techiman Central Magazine is very common. As the strike action enters day four, we are here to gauge the situation as well as speak with some parents and uh, these pupils loitering about on how this particular strike action is impacting their lives. I am in Manco School. We haven't been to school since Monday. Our teachers told us to go home because they are on strike. They ask us to return only when we hear the strike action is over. We school. Holiday. Teacher focus strikes. I didn't see any one to school. strike. I didn't see to stay home. I didn't see any one to school. I'm pleading with government to listen to the teachers so we go back to school. A Deputy General Secretary aspirant of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, Mustafa Bande, is optimistic the NDC is the only alternative that can bring the country back on track. He says governing new patriotic party's reign has been characterized by corruption, resulting in excruciating hardship on the people. Rafiq Salam reports from WA. Addressing the media in WA after a tour of all 11 constituencies in the Upper West region, where he interacted with some delegates and supporters ahead of the party's national executive election, Mustafa Bandi opened up on why he wants to be the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC in charge of... Opposition. One of the cruel ways the MPP took power from us from 2016 to 2020 was the lack of strong security systems. And when I am elected as the Deputy General Secretary, I'll take over operations and to ensure that our party is adequately prepared in terms of security to deal with the elements that will come up in 2024 election. If you are minded to know um, whether or not force played a role in 2016 and 2020 elections, my analysis have shown that about six constituencies or seats that were supposed to have been won by the NDC was lost as a result of grievous intimidation by the MPP using various forms of elements, including some elements within state institutions like the Ghana Police Service and the military. Given the opportunity, he told us what he will do. NDC must go into 2024 with a mentality of winning power and nothing else. Power is not something you negotiate for. Power is something you take by force. Assuming you have a broken pipe in your area, are you able to really describe the problem over a phone? And even if you're able to, do you have difficulties describing the precise location of the problem? Fortunately for the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology students, Jude Selassie Kwashi and Genevieve Anand have developed an app dubbed Call Away to provide a live feed to capture an emergency or utility problem, call out for technical assistance and monitor responsive timelines of problem resolution. Love Films' Chrissy Debra speaks with the students for TikTok. Hello. Hello, this is the Ghana Police Service. Who am I speaking to? I'm please, I'm Candy. I was passing by and I saw two guys with a gun robbing a kiosk. Please, can you come right now? Where is this happening, police? I'm not from this area, so I can't tell. I don't know the police. Most people can't vividly describe a problem via a phone call. And even if they can't, they can't actually tell the exact location or direction to the exact location. With all this, we're inspired to take 
on uh, our project, which we call the Call Away project. Call Away basically is um, a report management system to serve as an alternate to the tool free system. And it comes with certain interesting features that solve the affor aforementioned uh, problems. Yeah, so with Call Away, you can select from uh, these buttons which problem you want to report, if it's water related, it's electricity related, or others. So I'd let him demonstrate. Please click on the WhatsApp problem. So yes, this is the form screen. Uh, you can see that there's a camera feature that allows the user to take either uh, an image or a video of the problem. And with this, we believe it will give the utility firms more knowledge or uh, to give them more details about the problem at hand, which will help them to equip themselves uh, appropriately before they come to the, the site of the problem. So, yeah, so after the picture is taken, uh, the coordinates of wherever you took the picture from is generated, which is seen here. And then uh, Call Away also gives you the option to record your voice to further describe the problem or type in, uh, in the description field to throw more light on the problem at hand. Yeah, so we can see from uh, the snack bar that the report has been submitted successfully. And then you can also view the uh, report history. Kindly view the report history from the visa. You can see we just submitted a report and then currently it is tagged as delivered, meaning it has been sent to the respective utility firm. So okay. go to the admin. So, so yes, and then Call Away also presents utility firms with the ability to update the users on the current status of the problem. That is if they are currently working on it or they've assigned it to someone to work on or they are done working on it. So he will demonstrate that. Currently, this is the problem I just submitted to the admin. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. The Network of Commercial Agriculture Production, NETCAP, a body of large-scale commercial farmers, is asking government to help avert a possible food security crisis in the country. According to the group, current trend shows there could be a possible food shortage, which needs emergency measures to address the challenges. Martina Bugri reports. Have said there was the need for government to support farmers to produce more to secure the country from heading into food security challenges. Our call is for government to do more in the immediate term to support farmers to produce more to secure our countries to secure our country from heading into food security challenges. Addressing the media in Tamale, the Secretary of NECAP. Wato B. Joshua said even though government has instituted some farmer-centered policies, they are not sufficient to contain the escalating financial crisis. Even though some pragmatic farmer-centered policies have been initiated and implemented by the government, they were, they were not sufficient to tame the tide of price increases. We are concerned that if the below challenges are not addressed immediately, our production capacity will be further constrained next year, and that can derail all the gains we have made in recent years as a country. The challenges that are limiting our production capacities are as follows. Inadequate access to and high cost of fertilizers and other inputs such as high yielding certified seeds and chemicals. Low market prices of some agricultural products, notably soya beans, as a result of the implementation of export restrictions on soya beans, high cost of credits and lack of support from financial institutions to lend to the agricultural sector. The Minister Tuato be raised concerns over the implementation of some of government's interventions, which is poorly done. Though we acknowledge the existence and implementation of some agricultural pr production enhancement interventions in the past, it is worth noting that most of these initiatives have not yielded the full results. Our observation is that most of these inter interventions were developed with little or no involvement of key stakeholders, such as farmers, input dealers, aggregators, financial institutions, and processors. He said NECAP is a body of about 200 large-scale commercial farmers with a network of other farmers. NETCAP is a group of about 200 large-scale commercial farmers who together cultivate more than 20,000 hectares of land, producing soya beans, rice, and maize. 
In the 2021 cropping season, we collectively produced about 200,000 metric tons of grains, most of which went to industrial firms in Ghana. Our network of 200 farmers work with over 60,000 smallholder farmers, cultivating over 100,000 hectares in the five northernmost regions of Ghana. Together with our outgrowers, we produce more than 200,000 metric tons of grains annually. Our vision is to revolutionize agriculture in the savannah re ecological regions and make Ghana the food grain basket in West Africa. That is it for the AMUs. Up next is the newspaper review. Welcome back to the AIM Show. It's now time for the news paper uh, review segment. And joining me via Zoom is a programs manager at Odiko, Kina Likamani. Good morning, Kina. How are you? Uh, please un unmute yeah. me. Okay, cool. <laughs> good how are morning. You? How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm good. All right, so we have the papers here. We have Daily Graphic, Daily Guide, The Crusading Guide, Business Finder, and The Ghanaian Times. Uh, Benjamin will join us shortly, but let's start with the Daily Graphic. And I'm sure you use the motorway uh, quite a lot, uh, but good news for everybody is that the motorway is being fixed. And according to Daily Graphic, less than 24 hours after they visit, or after they published a story on the deteriorating Accra Tema motorway, the mobile maintenance unit of the Ghana Highway Authority has moved in to patch some of the potholes on the expressway. The picture was captured last Tuesday evening, about 10 hours after the publication. Now, a lot of people are asking that, okay, so they are patching it, but how strong or how long will it last? Uh, that's some of the questions people are asking on social media. But let's go to the big story where uh, Graphic MD says, restructure economy around agriculture. Now, the managing uh, director of the Graphic Communications Group Limited, uh, to a, uh, a has identified agriculture and its value chain as a lever to stimulate the rest of the economy. Uh, let's go to page uh, three for that story. So he says we need a lifestyle change backed by real commitment and endurance to stick to a plan that delivers the this mandate throwing more lights on this call agriculture can act as a catalyst to stimulate investment in these sectors which will trigger other sectors in the various communities he was of the strong belief that the individual and or working group targeted intervention programs consistently applied and reviewed for efficiency had the direct benefits of being able to support them. So, so that is what the MD of Graphic is saying, that we need to restructure the economy around agriculture. And we're getting ready for the budget 2023 reading. Um, Kina, let me put you, let me let you in on this one. What, what, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on this? How can we restructure our economy? Well, Mr. Afo, actually is completely correct. Um, we, we, the main thing we have to understand is that, um, you know, we got independence, um, but we haven't decolonized. And we need to decolonize um, um, our economy. We need to own our economy. And wherever it is that we can produce, we can add value, we need to do that in Ghana. We have never actually attempted a real effort at decolonizing our economy. Um, and so even when we restructure our economy around certain sectors, like what Mr. Afol is saying, agriculture, we need to make sure that we own the, the significant portions of the production of agriculture, in particular, adding value. And not just growing things, but also storing things, canary, the entire value chain. 
it makes no, it has never made any sense that we produce, uh, we grow cocoa, and yet the vast majority, the, the vast majority of the of earnings from the cocoa value chain isn't 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 in Ghana. It does not benefit our farmers. So um, it's not just about restructuring our economy. We need to decolonize our economy so that we are still not um, an extractive entity for Western powers, which is what we still are. Um, so I agree with him, but we have to go deeper. I mean, we, we have to have, it's time. We need a clear view. But, um, you know, this, this government is not into changing the, the, the structure of our economy. Um, every leader comes and says we want to industrialize Ghana. It's they, they have no commitment towards it because actually doing it will restructuring our economy and decolonizing our economy will make things difficult for Ghanaians in the short term. It is a fact. It's a thing we have to do. But in the long term, yes, it will. It, it's it's for our greatest benefit. There's no point in us suffering economically where we are not in a plan to own. Um, and restructure our economy. Um, yeah, but it's it's one of the things that when a leader comes and you know they promise because we all know we need to do it. They they promise they'll do it, but they don't do it. But it's one of the things to really judge whether in any kind of leadership is serious about um, building Ghana in such a way um, that benefits and 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 improves Ghanaian lives. This thing about restructuring the economy. My co-host, Benjamin Akako. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Mavs. How are you? Um, I should be asking you, how are you? I am very well. How about you? Are you very well? Super. Fantastic. Okay, we missed you at six o'clock. You did? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Whereabouts were you? How did you miss me? Where were you? I, I was here, I, I out and about. I, I started the show on my own. I was very lonely. <laughs> Are you okay, though? You were. I am. Okay. I am. Okay. All right. So, uh, Kina, let's go to uh, the middle page of uh, the Daily Graphic. Abolish uh -huh. E-Levy, and that's according to Professor Bachman, an economist and professor of finance at the University of Ghana. So he has called for the abolition of... Um, for us to abol uh, abolish the uh, electronic transfer, which is the e-levy, he said that digitalization was a fledging area and that the future is in the area of uh, digitalization and you do not uh, introduce e-levy at this stage. He says that even if we can't abolish it, it should be reduced considerably. If you look at the countries that are accommodating digital-based investments in Africa, Ghana is not part of the top four. Uh, so this, he said this at... Um, breakfast meeting, this graphic business and standard breakfast meeting. And the theme was 17 times too many. What should we stop doing and start doing as a people? So this was um, 17 times too many. Uh, we've been to the IMF. Well, Ghana has been to the IMF 17 times too many. What should we stop doing? What should we start doing as a people? And that's the question I'm asking you, Kina. What should we stop doing and start doing as a people? Well, <laughs> first of all, I agree with abolishing e-levy. One of the things, because, in, 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 and he is completely correct, but also it's an anti-poor, anti-youth, anti-women, anti-marginalized people policy. Mm. One of the things we need to start doing as a country is to run this, is to run our lives understanding that we absolutely want to um, um, improve Ghana for young people. Okay. One the, it's, one of the, it's one of the key things we have to do. So we decolonize for young people. Mm -hmm. We need to we need to put in place. So the thing about the eleven that is also anti youth is that a lot of young people and a lot of women, people who do not have access to the traditional avenues of business, had really enabled their businesses through um, uh, mo mobile money. Instead of the government putting in place measures mm -hmm. to find them and tax them, they do an eleven which makes it then difficult for people to continue to, ta to, 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 do, to run their business, generate income, so that they can even be taxed by the government. In a country where you understand what mobile money does for young people and for women mm. and for business owners, there was, I mean, it, it, it's, so, it's so immoral, let me use that word, I hardly use that word, to have done the e-levy in Ghana. Yeah. Um, um, so it's not even an issue of abolishing it. We need to punish at the polls the okay. people who actually through this e-levy. 
All right. We need to act manage because it's, it should never in a country like Ghana mm -hmm. with such wide widening inequality, it should never have been suggested and it should never have passed. I see. All right. Uh, let me uh, touch on one of my last stories. You mentioned, I mean, you know, accommodating young people and uh, including young people, including the minority, including women. Uh, but the, um, Ochehini has advised some students not to be misled into Galamse activities. So he cautioned students of um, the Abuqua State College not to allow themselves to be misled into illegal mining, properly called as Galamse, in a bit to make quick money. He said as students, their priority was to study instead of engaging in Galamse to ruin their future careers. Docheni said, do not allow people or bad people to take you to the Galamse site to get quick money because it will not benefit you and you may even die. Take full advantage of the free senior high school education program and learn very well to climb the academic ladder. So now the question is, I mean... It's not like the students are the ones that are engaged. I mean, we've been fighting this whole Galamse uh, menace, and it's not like it's the students that are engaging in these illegal mining um, activities. Do you not think that the Ochehene is directing his advice to the wrong people? Because, I mean, it's the chiefs, well, and yeah, uh huh. First of all, I'm only responding because I'm on Zoom and you've asked me this question, but I will not be responding to anything that the Ochehene says. Okay. Any. Because he says that if we criticize the government, we are in uh -huh. He says, and so it, it, it's it's it, what he says is not anything that I'm ever going to consider. Okay. So let's put that aside. Uh -huh. But let me just in general say that as a country, we must stop telling young people how to overcome a system we enable to oppress them. Uh huh. We must stop doing that yeah. and we must actually build a country that makes it easier for young people to thrive and actually become the people that we desperately need them to be. Mm -hmm. We're always telling young people what to do, but we are, all, we are never making it possible for them to do it. It's true. If you build a country in which you are, you, you know that one of your prime directives is to make a country where it is feasible and it is easy for young people to thrive. You don't even have to say some of these things, but we are always talking down to young people when in fact it is the adults who are misbehaving. It is the adults that are making it incredibly impossible mm -hmm. for young people to thrive in this country. So mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. not do that. Let's stop. Let's actually work for a country in which we don't even have to say these things to them because it, because it's, it would only then be a minority. Yeah. It would just be a fiscal portion that it will be who, but not, not, no, no, let's not. And let's stop listening to such things either. This is, it's, it's not, it's old, it's, 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 it's just talk. It's it just, has no substance behind it. It's just talk. Benjamin, uh, what do you have? Well, I'll, I'll start it from my end. Rather than go straight to the Ghanaian Times, Kina, I'm bringing this up because it's an issue of interest, one that I definitely know you would have a thought on. Uh, there's this lady, actually a former colleague of mine in law school, Amma Governor, and her issue has come to the fore in recent times because she has uh, passed all the requirements for the GLC, that is to be called to the bar, and uh, recently it came to the fore that, well, her social media posts were not in the best of tastes. She uh, speaks of sexual liberation and so many other topics. I don't want to uh, bring them up here. But apparently, she's also uh, bisexual, and all of these have come to the fore. But, but the point to be made is that the GLC is delaying her call to the bar because of what she's been posting. I, I have my own thoughts about, I mean, some of the things and their distastefulness versus her legal rights. So here are some of the reasons. There's a petition out there. Over 10,000 people have signed it. And here are some of the reasons uh, they put there for signing. I just want to run them by you and then pose a question. So this one says, Amma has passed all the requirements of the School of Law uh, and the GLC said she has been a shining example of the hard work and dedication it, it takes to become a lawyer in Ghana. We need more lawyers who are open-minded and affirming of everyone as she is. There's another one. Anyone's sexual orientation shouldn't be a reason to be condemned. She is someone who worked for what she wanted, and for that reason, she should be treated equally and given the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. The next one says, uh, okay, so it talks about the rule of laws, and it says, uh, 
it's so heartbreaking that she will be judged by social media. Look, Kina, I am Catholic, very much so, and I have my own, you know, thoughts about all of these things that are happening. But should she, from the cultural angle, social angle, legal angle, be victimized on this? What's your take? Of course she shouldn't be victimized. The sheer hypocrisy of the Ghana Legal Council, the sheer hypocrisy that is rampant in Ghana, but particularly in the legal profession, the ways in which the legal profession actually turns around to dehumanize their own students. Mm. Because what? They want to close ranks and not have as many doctors and lawyers. There's a huge problem with legal, le legal practice in Ghana. We actually do not have the body of lawyers with the sensibilities of that this country needs in order to overcome the oppression inherent in even political rule. So now it, it's shocking the levels at which the Ghana Legal Council intends to always embarrass itself, make clear that they do not stand with human rights. Actual lawyers. So you have to ask yourself, where does that lead us, leave us then? Actual lawyers. And you know what is sad? The petition is being forwarded to me to take a look at by actual pra uh, practicing experienced lawyers. They actually do not, instead of actually canvassing their own fraternity to shut this thing down and make the legal council understand that this is hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. It is oppression. It is so wrong. It is so wrong. It's mm. against our constitution. What, what then not do you... Only are they doing, not what? only are they doing this to our governor, they are also asking for social media handles of their students. I, I was just about to I mean, mention that. This is, this, this is a country in which the law... In fact, let, look, this is a country that actually, when it suits the legal profession, they will say, oh, it's the law, it's the law, it's the constitution. And when it suits them, they will run ramshot over the constitution. It is an utter disgrace. But the Ghana Legal Council has been disgracing itself in Ghana of late. Mm. And the only reason this stands, let me also be clear, is also increasingly we have political power that is actually very comfortable disregarding human rights in Ghana, which is a shame. And, and it, 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 it's just unbelievable. And their president who said he was a human rights crusader, which is a joke, as we understand now. For some uh, of these things, Kina, should Kina. Not, nobody should even say these things. Mm. Very quickly, you, you speak about sensibilities. Uh, people will also talk about, you know, about the LGBTQI, anti-LGBTQI uh, bill in Parliament. We call it that because the full name is quite a mouthful, family values and all of that. But when you look at uh, cultural sensibilities as well, people will also point to that and say, hey, you can't be doing this. And there's also the legal angle which frowns on, you know, uh, some of these things in, in, in the Constitution. I'm not saying all of them, some of these things. How do you react to people who put up, out such arguments? Let me first say that this whole um, blanket statement you people like to make about cultural sensibilities, that's also like wrong. That's also wrong. My name is Kinali Kimani. I am the daughter of Amate. My first household, my father was Kenyan. But it was my mother's best friend in Kenya who took us in when my mother needed a home to nurse me. And that man was gay. Mm. So nobody should come to me and tell me that there are cultural sensibilities and nonsense. I will not be accepting that. But, 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 but that is not to deny friends, that they exist. But, but no, no, no. What it says is that we are all different. And this idea that there is some kind of overarching cultural thing that can then be used to oppress minorities, that is wrong. But let me put that aside, because that is my background. Let me also say that, imagine, let, let's say that what um, uh, the LGBTQ community does, disgust some Ghanaians, a lot of Ghanaians, let me just say. It is it's, it's what you people find disgusting, fine. That does not mean you dehumanize people for what you consider to be disgusting conduct. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that you put together a bill, the most, the most dehumanizing, restrictive bill that we have ever had in this great nation called Ghana. It criminalizes advocacy. It criminalizes freedom of speech. It criminalizes sympathy. You imagine that our parliament is going to pass a bill that encourages, in fact, that forces Ghanaians into a position not to be sympathetic to other Ghanaians. 
sympathy, which is, a, which is one of our fundamental human characteristics. That bill says that you can't sympathize. That bill enables family members to spy on other family members. Just because some people, uh, the, let me say, the majority of Ghanaians think this is disgusting. Mm -hmm. Where then does that leave any, like, why? Why? And then, you know, so I don't even think that uh, some of you in the press have actually read this bill and seen some aspects of this bill that is so incredibly heinous. Uh, Ghana's most, um, most, part, most egregious crime is the crime against the Constitution, is the treason against the state of Ghana. It is the treason against constitution. Even in that, you no, know, it doesn't criminalize sympathy. Even in that, it doesn't criminalize. This bill, which by the way, let's also be clear, has been brought from the West. It's a new form of colonization, you no, know, is what people want to sign up for. It is these sorts of attitudes that is making people, empowering people in their hate. You can be disgusted by the behavior of people, but you have no right to dehumanize them. Right. Let's get into other stories very quickly. Ghanaian Times, let's clean up Ghana's political system, kick out money launderers, foreigners from political space. That's according to uh, former Speaker Michael Quay, Professor Michael Quay. NLC, that is the National Labor Commission, orders striking teachers back to the classroom as it seeks amicable solutions to government and uh, teacher unions on pass. I heard them uh, speaking this morning on our sister station at Dum TV and saying that Yes, we'll comply with the court's ruling because it is the law, or basically because it, the NLC has the status of the high court, but we are going to still push for our concerns, basically concerning the new director general of the Ghana Education Service. Tema Metropolis tops 2021 district league table. There's also Ghana is food sufficient, a Greek minister assures parliament. And then 2023 budget, Professor Kwati calls for massive reduction in e-levy. Kina, let me just do this very quickly. On the budget, the director of ISA at the University of Ghana is calling for a reduction. And he is saying that since it's raking just about 10%, it should be reduced to about 1.5% after public outcry against... Well, it was reduced to 1.5%. But he is actually saying it should be reduced to 0 0.5% percent for efficiency and then um on the next page there's a story i just wanted to add up on on this bit uh, let's clean up ghana's political system so the former speaker says ghana's political system is an impediment to its economic growth as it allows for rent-seeking tendencies and political financing leading to the control of natural resources quick reactions when did he realize that I don't understand some of these things that people always say when they are, are actually out of politics. Isn't, isn't, is, when, when did he realize that? You know, I'm sick and tired of political operatives <laughs> coming out to tell us what we must do. Start doing it. He's a, he's a very powerful person. Am I, isn't this a former speaker or am I wrong? Yes, he is. When did he realize this? Because they luxuriate in it, and then when they are out of whatever significant power, they come and tell us. When he was a speaker, did he not see? Before he became a speaker, did he not see? We, I mean, people must actually start doing, you even start, and then tell us this, these are the, some of the things you put in place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I'm sick and tired of this behavior. I'm sick and tired of it, because it's like, they only say these things when it suits them. Put, the, put him back into a political position, powerful. He will start saying something else. So no, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Which is the next one? The e-levy to 0.5%. I think you started talking about it. A short I'm look, done with my if feet. there's something really immoral going on in Ghana, it's the e-levy. We have said this over and over again. But let's also be clear that this government intends... You see, when the president came to give that speech of his, that was an absolute sham. What, they, what we should have understood is they intend to continue doing everything they are doing until, until and if we get the IMF deal here. So he will keep the size of his government. They will do more importation. 
because right now it's like maximizing the amount of time left before IMF gets here. So they'll keep the E levy. How many people should tell this government that they should? They should? I mean, it's like how many times should we have said we there was an outcry? Everybody, I don't know a single person who is 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 right thinking, knows Ghana, understands Ghana, loves Ghanaians. Who does not say this E levy is an absolute horror? Mm. Mm. Uh, thank you for sharing those thoughts. Uh, this one is just to uh, just uh, put the headline out. Valco is set to resume operations, and I, I covered this story extensively, but Valco is set to resume operations following a, a successful he meeting said it the last time, yeah. held between senior management of the company, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, and the ICU. The meeting was held on Monday, and it was to find common ground in resolving the impasse between the management and staff over salary increments and conditions of uh, service. Well, last week, workers embarked on a strike after rejecting a 22% salary increment. The workers, apart from demanding 65% increment, were also asking for their salaries to be indexed to the dollar as their counterparts in the United States of America. I feel part of the reporting on this story has been a bit um, inaccurate over time because it's not some of these emanated from previous years, their, their engagements with leadership and all of that. But at least the good thing is a state asset uh, is back set to be back on track because this is West Africa's only aluminium smelter and mm -hmm. we can't afford for it uh, to go down. And but, you know, uh, we question. should always remember, I mean, not that you want to um, tie yourself to old things and never change, but Marco is the reason we have been um, uh, down in Ghana. <laughs> so, Marco should have been running all this time. Mm. Never, never, never went off. But you know, uh, it's because of our penchant for allowing those who finance uh, politicians into power to continue importation. It's why mm -hmm. industries in Ghana that can actually do and uh, do things for us are always hampered in, in, in reference to importation. It's because financiers, people finance the governments and the, and the political parties, and then they decide they want to do importation. Right, when, right. in fact, actually doing our own industries will, uh, is far, far, far better. Far. Mm. And wouldn't land us in this situation we are in now. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, get into the daily guide and majority NPP um, uh, meets over Oferiata exits that pay, the story is on page three. I'm going to take a look at it. Uh, I want us to touch on two things, Operation Garamse and Ken Must Go. Well, the members of parliament belonging to the governing New Patriotic Party are holding a crunch meeting this morning to take a final decision on Ken Oferiata's exit uh, following his recent utterances. Now, the majority caucus says it wants to send a strong message to the president that they stand by the agreement reached with him over the removal of the two ministers at the finance ministry. According to some Daily Guide sources, um, the majority caucus have indicated that should the president fail to call the finance minister to order, the caucus would likely boycott the minister's upcoming budget presentation in parliament. So that's the first one. But the second one is Galam Say and Operation Halt to arrest eight illegal miners and seizes 30 excavators. Aside from the 30 excavators seized, the team has also destroyed four other excavators and the eight illegal miners were arrested in uh, Bandam Kwata in the northern command area of the operational responsibility of the team. Now, the suspected, Ill suspected illegal miners were um, handed over to the officers at the police station in the eastern region. So um, that's that's the first story. But I want to tie this one with uh, the Galamse Queen video in court. Now, an Accra High Court yesterday played a video recorded at an illegal mining site in the um, Ashanti region where some Chinese nationals connected with Aisha Huang were arrested in 2017. The video was tendered in evidence by Superintendent of Immigration, Rupert Ransford, when he testified as the prosecution's first witness in the trial of Aisha Huang, who is facing four counts of offenses relating to illegal mining, re-entering Ghana illegally and employing foreign nationals. Um, led in his evidence in chief by Yvonne, the director of public prosecutions, the witness told the courts that he recorded the video uh, 
uh, with his mobile phone in 2017 when he led a team of six junior immigration officers to the site where some Chinese nationals and Africans were engaged in illegal mining. So firstly, your thoughts on um, uh, Finance Minister Ken Oferiata's, um, you know, majority MPPs, MPs calling for uh, Ken Oferiata to exit. And the second one being Gallam Say, uh, do you think that we are winning this fight? Um, what are your thoughts on these two? Well, first of all, everything that is happening around Kendo Foriata from the, the executive side, meaning the president, yeah. and the party and the majority caucus in parliament, these are all stall tactics. These are all moves to manage us. First of all, the president has absolutely made it clear that um, Ken is not going. Uh -huh. Secondly, so anything that the party is doing, don't uh, don't uh, abstain don't vote don't take part in the vote we are having meetings here we are doing that these are all stall tactics to make us think that the majority npp caucus or mpp is actually having a problem with kendo ferrata being the finance minister mm. until they actually act this is all stall tactics since they started from the 80 people in the 80 mps in parliament I think it's been what two or three weeks. Has it been? Mm -hmm. These are stall tactics. They are not to be taken seriously until they actually act. We shouldn't even mind what MPP wants to do about this issue. We know they are clear. Mm. They support the president and his 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 finance minister. Why do I say this? They have never actually um, um, declined to pass any ideas that has come from um, Ken Oferiata, including and especially the e levy. Mm. If, if, if they didn't stand up against um, the president and, and his finance team over the e levy, now they are going to stand up against the president. This is all hypocrisy until something actually gets done. And we should treat it with the contempt it deserves. And then the second one was Gallam saying, if we're winning the fight. Uh, uh, we, we are not winning. We, in fact, no, let me just say, we don't even have a fight against Gallam Say. I the see. only time they mobilize themselves over Galamse is when there is a public outcry. Mm -hmm. And since, in fact, huh, when, 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 when any country is so oppressive and when its economic conditions worsen, somebody, Maoli Dake, reminded me that it disengages people from being citizens. Mm. So, of course, you no, know, Ghana is so difficult now. We are not able to sustain our outcry over Galamse alone because everything now is just gone to hell, mm. right? So yeah. every time we have an outcry, giddy, 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 and then they do something, it's, it's lies and it is hypocrisy. It is designed to make us think something is happening. Nothing is happening. If you guys will even do analysis and map what I'm saying, you'll find that every time there's an outcry, some arrest. The court cases, the last, last time I heard on radio that there was a Chinese, and funny enough, they are always Chinese nationals, as though Ghanaians are not the majority breakers. Mm. But there was a case with a, 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 a Chinese national, and there were no interpreters in court, so that the judge had to dismiss the case or something. There is no political will to support this. Okay. And so if there's no political will to support this, then we all understand that significant elements from the MPP is involved in this, which Ghanaians also understand. Mm. And significant powerful elements are behind the Galam State. Because there are rumors, are there not, that even the military people guard some of the Galam State people, our military. There is no, when, and, and when we say this, there is no public, uh, there's no outcry from the, from the government, even the president even putting together a commission to even understand what, what we mean by when we think the military is um, guarding that I'm still operating. There's nothing. There's like nothing. All right. Because it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's on, on the <clears throat> Galamse tangent, this trajectory, I remember the last time we spoke, we could, we could go on forever. But for the sake of time, we have just a minute left. I'd like to run these uh, issues by you very quickly. The new crusading guide says MPP MP rallies support for Ekufuado. I'm talking about the member of parliament for Doma East, Paul Aprekuchum Berima, who has called on Gadeas to support the government uh, of Nanado to tackle the challenges facing the economy in a bid to help in its quick recovery. I want to also add, tying that in, thousands of Ghanaians thronged the Kwame Nkrumah interchange area. Why? Because of the American visa lottery. And 
Interactions with some of them show that they are willing to get out of the country in droves simply because of the economic situation and not seeing any hope moving forward. Young people, the lifeblood of our economy. Quick reactions to this, Kina. We, you know, it's so sad. Um, every so many generations, we end up here where people want to leave in droves. Um, and I can't, it, it's, it, it's painful. We have to stop. We have to build a nation in which our young can feel this is their home because this is their home. Mm. Um, so I, what, what, what am I going to say? Um, it's very, very sad. See, our, our young um, leave these shores and they thrive somewhere else and they give their energies to other countries. And, and it, is, it is just abhorrent. This is not right. how you build a country. Mm. And when you are confronted by this, you are to rally around and see what it is that you should be doing. Ghana is not, th th this great nation and it's, and it's great people, our young are so special to us. This is not some, some kind of thing that you, this is not a, a country you need for your own, you know, um, idea of yourself. This right. is about serving. Yeah. What are they going to do? They are going to leave. Because absolutely, it's become even more difficult. It was difficult before. It's excruciating and impossible now. Mm. Even even young people, when you tell, if you tell a young person, go and look for a job, have we seen the trotter of face? Mm -hmm. I mean, huh, it even is. that alone. I mean, you know, <laughs> how we, how, <laughs> mm -hmm. and what I want to tell people is that me on Saturday, I went to the Kumi Prepo. Um, of demonstration. People may say that um, it's not going to change anything, but really, the only thing political people fear mm -hmm. is that people are out on the streets demonstrating. Talking on social media isn't going to change it because the people that you actually need to influence are not on social media. Yeah. The cronies, they have to see. They have to see that we are angry. And you think that, oh, no, and nothing happened to us. Let me also say that the, the police were on their absolutely best behavior. So the next time a demonstration is for people should go. Okay. Because that's the only thing they are going to see and listen to. Mm. Just by the response of what the police they deployed and trying to marshal the, the demonstrators away from any significant settlements or areas where people are on the market and stuff. You, we have to be vocal. When they come out to talk in public, boo them. Okay. This is the only Ghana you have, and it is getting worse. And next year will be worse than this year. Well, let's 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 hope for better. Uh, Mapito, yeah. it appears it has overed even Kina Likimani. It, it has overed uh, it, 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 Kina. It, it, I know, right? It, 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 <laughs> I, I, oh, no, but let me say, let me say, I remain, as always, very, um, you know, I remain hopeful. But uh -huh. hope must be tied to action. Right. And, 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 and we must not just hope yeah. and we must not just pray. I've said prayer isn't going to get us out because God uh -huh. has given us all the elements, all mm -hmm. the foundations uh -huh. Uh -huh. for action and courage. We must act. Right. right. Kina, thank, thank you, you so much, much for joining. The, <laughs> the way we said thank you so much together, it, it tells you how yeah. grateful we are. Thank you so much. I, I, I think uh, she should join us more often. I really, really enjoyed that. Yes, we look that. forward to that. Uh, yeah. All right, Kina, thank you so much. Uh, Ten days to Qatar World Cup. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to be missing, unfortunately, some star players. For me, mm -hmm. I'm heartbroken that uh, Sadio Mane is not going to be there. But guess what? Former Black Stars captain Stephen Apia is extolling the technical ingenuity, abilities of Otto Addo. What does he have to say on that? Well, you want to find out. Stick and stay with our sports up next. Thank you for staying with us on the AM show. Let's now talk about Ghana's economic crisis. And we have that debate to oust Finance Minister Ken Oforiacha, which commences today. And Parliament will uh, be debating or talking about that motion of censure filed by the minority leader Haruna Idrisu for the removal of the Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiacha. Uh, the minority leader is alleging that he directly benefits from Ghana's economic woes because his companies receive commissions uh, as far as Ghana's debt overhang is concerned. Now, closely linked to that is another call by the minority for governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, to resign. 
Today we discuss these with Roxon Nelson Dafiamepo, Member of Parliament, South Dai, also a member of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee. We also have from uh, the ruling administrations and Collins Adoma Comenta, a member of parliament, Ifijakwa Bread North. He is also a member of the Finance Committee of Parliament. And joining the conversation, adding some academic spice to it, Dr. Kwame Asasante, political scientist at the University of Ghana. He is also head of the Center, director of the Center for European Studies. I would like to say a very good morning to Dr. Kwame Asasante. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Ben, and good morning to the Honourable Members of Parliament. Okay. And to you, Collins and Roxon, a very good morning to you. Morning, and good morning to my brother, to mm. yourself, to my people in South and Peki, Pali, Pebe, Tongo. Mm. Um, Saturday, the AP Church will be celebrating 175 years mm. of um, missionary work. Okay. Um, which began from Peki on... 14th November 1847 and so we are inviting all of you to come and join us okay to come and join the Nyanyue Hamela <laughs> I think after the Hogbe Chochos are uh, more and more people are you know excited uh, to come into the Volta region and no, but Hogbe Chocho has always been such a seminar annual I am not saying that it is not. I'm merely this, saying this that the, the participation and of course it's with, always with, with, with this this year was it's, it's always, it's always special, but you look at the color when the Gamanche, yes. you know, uh, the the Sante. Otumfu and others just converged on the place. It added some spice and I'm saying that it has just given more life. Let to me tell activities. you let me tell you in nineteen ninety three mm. it was more special. Okay. Because the chiefs of Nochi Okay. You know. Oh, that's interesting. And yes. And some other. From Togo, right? Yes. That time was Togo at the large, I was, was alive. Mm. And, and JJ was in the height of his rule <laughs> at the time. Mm. It was so, so special. You couldn't just drive between Angloga and Keta. You had to walk. Wow. Yeah. And that wow. time, the road has been freshly done. You know, okay, the, so you, the, you, you, you get what he means, yeah, right? I yeah, mean, to the, the road, point where the road there was little space done. to even you move. Know, move. So yeah. It was so, so, well, I was young then in saying school. We just read. There's always our, something nostalgic we, about it. No, no, we just read right. our old levels and then test six form. Right. You know, and so, but yes, I agree that uh, yeah. what happened last week was momentous mm. be, because of the historical relationship. So, right. You know, we are building a nation. There's, there's a need for cohesion. Quick, quick, quick question. Uh, since you've brought all of this up, I'll, I'll come to you, Collins, for any salutations you have for your <coughs> constituency and any special people. But what do you think this does for... You know, there's always been this talk about Ashanti Eber, relations and all of that. I mean, a lot of people don't even know how far back Anglo Ashanti relations go. And yeah. I, I felt this was a very good yeah. highlighting yes. point. But what do you think this does for national unity, national cohesion? Very briefly on that. Yeah, um, very fantastic. I, as the MP for South Dine and as the MP for the people of Peki mm. in particular, mm -hmm. if we come to my constituency, mm -hmm. about 70% of the people have account names. For my mother had an account name. My mother was Akotua. Okay. And my uncles, they are called Obin. You okay. understand? So, and, and if you see the people, if you see the Peki people, they are like Ashantis. And there is that historical connection. In fact, they do things like Ashantis do, the way the Ashantis do their things. Right. Culture, everything, lineage, everything. But they are unalloyed Avis. If you get to Peki, about 80% of the people have account names. Right. You know, so even the people who are the king makers, they have account names. That, that, that runs across the Volta region. You know, especially all the, the way into yeah. OT, so, what is now so, the OT region. So it means that there's been that historical relationship and interconnectedness, mm. culturally, historically, even politically. Right. You know, so we, we, the latter day sense should cease. Okay, point, yes. point, point made on that score. <laughs> Collins, good to have you. Good to have I, you. Have to. It's been a while. It's been it, a while. it has. Yes, yeah, it's been a while. And good morning to my very good friend and uh, Vandal. 
<laughs> you mate? Sharp, 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 sharp. I guess you guys are forgetting I'm, a, I'm an old vandal too. Oh, oh. view mate. <laughs> so, wait, wait. Uh, Dr. Asasanti, don't tell me you're an old vandal. I'm an unrepented vandal. Ah. Hey. No, this come. one, we, we must investigate my producer. <laughs> After come. You have put four vandals on the bag. So, let me wait. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I like that. He said he's an unrepentant vandal. Yes. And, 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 and. <laughs> The producer himself, yes, yes. the producer of this show, yes. my, my boss, yes. Derek Ekosam, yes. guess what? It's a vandal. <laughs> Today is a vandal's day. It's a vandal day. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead, Bob. And uh, greetings to my constituents. I call my employers. And I have a very special perspective to this whole Ashanti Airway uh, conversation. It's Evie, not Evie. 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 You know, my stepdad is Evie. It's Evie. My stepdad is Evie. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, this is the second time I'm saying this. Yeah. I wish he was my father. Mm. Fantastic stepfather. He never made me feel like a stepson. In fact, my wife is Evie. So this whole conversation. But you are unrepentant. unrepentant. <laughs> Although I'm 100% Ashanti. Yeah. And so this whole conversation about Ashanti, don't like it, I, I don't buy that at all. What happened over the weekend was a beautiful display of tradition. And if you listen to the Ashanti, the, the Oh, the, 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 the chief from the, the guard, the Gaman yeah, chair. Yeah, the Interesting, the Gaman chair was born in Ashanti region, yeah. born in Kumasi, grew up in Kumasi. And if you listen to them and the history and the kind of connection they have, it makes nonsense, excuse my language, of the whole idea of Everest don't, not liking Ashantis and Ashantis don't liking uh, Everest. I mean, I was so excited watching. Um, how tradition, I mean, chiefs in palanquins and speaking so beautifully. And I wish this continues. Of course, I was told that all hotels within the area were, were booked, a promotion. Oh, yeah, there was, there was, there was oh, practically no... Nowhere. So you can imagine the economic activity yes. that went on yes. between yes. Uh, within this one week. Yeah, Santa Hines retinue alone. Alone, mm. you know, the buses... <laughs> About, that, what, 500 yes. or something like yeah, that? Yeah, the buses that came... No, I met the OA buses, 30. Yeah. 30 days on. Yeah. Yeah. The buses that Japan came to... 30 with hotel military escort. Food. Yeah. So you can imagine economic the Economic benefits. Yeah. Economic... So the this should continue. Effect. Yes, this should continue. And... Uh, I'm and I think we should excited. replicate this. All the big festivals, you know, up north, yeah. down south. If we do this, I mean, some of these kings and paramount chiefs may not be able to attend all of them. But if we have that in feeling, yeah, when I'm yeah, doing mine, yeah, you come. Yeah. When I'm, you are doing yours, yeah. we. They, they, I think it, it would think add to you know, tourism. Was tourism was tourism boost it. If you recall, I think 2018, mm. when Asante celebrated, no, 2019, mm. when he celebrated his 20th. Yes, yes. yes. That one with yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And some people, well, they were on social media lambasting him mm. that he had gone to Koto to that Santé, oh. all those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these are roadside talks. Yes. But you see, there are benefits. Yeah. You know, there are, you see, Ghana, we are a nation state. A nation state in the sense that it's a conglomeration of a lot of other smaller states. So in the days of yore, this traditional dominions also had their diplomat, special diplomatic relationships with other traditional authorities and empires and states before the white man came. Yeah. You know? So international diplomacy didn't start with the coming of no, the white definitely man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that is a very mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So if you, if, you, if, if, if you read your history well, you know that traditional authorities had in relationships. That is why we had systems for yes. even before yes. the, the, the great empires of Ghana. I'm, I'm told there's a, ta a the town called Kumase in Anglo. Yes. One chief for Texas. Oh, yes, there are these. Called Kumase. Just as you have Anglo. Ah, there's yeah. Matthew Kumase. Matthew Kumase. Ah. You go to Nazi. So, anyway, so interesting points yes. made. Let me, let me quickly bring in uh, Dr. Asa Asante. Quick reactions to such uh, activities, festivals that bring together. Uh, the country. Quick reactions to that and, and we'll proceed with a substantive conversation. You see, um, I love the topic because this is what I've been yearning for over the years, that we should emphasize on things that put us together and de-emphasize things that divide us. That put us All right. Why am I saying that? If you, you have studied your history very well, which I give thanks to my two professors, Professor, little Professor uh, John Finn and Professor Andrew Fenny. Uh, and of course, Professor Agusia Perry, they gave me a sound foundation in history. 
If you look at the migration routes of some of these groups, you realize that we come from the same place. Take, for instance, Among Accounts and Gunjes. They all come from today, what, Mali, isn't it? All right. One group of people. And then when we came here, the groups came here, they also joined forces through what, marriage, through, you know, uh, peace treaties and all that. All right, put us together. Mm. And one thing that we have not, you know, averted our minds to is that we, we put a lot of emphasis on ethnic groups and all that. But you ask yourself that if men, I am to ask you right now, that go back to three, four generations and tell me uh, how you can trace uh, your lineage from your mother or your father's line. I tell you, beyond three, you tell me that you don't know. So, at a point in time, you will settle somewhere and move on. So it tells you that, look, we should not put much emphasis on issue of things that divide us and rather right. put us all together. There is a common history that put us together. And that is what the political history of this country. Right. It is the only history that put us together. The rest, look, uh, yes, we want to identify with our groups and all that. But the things that divide us, look, we don't need them. Because if you go to the migration route, there are a lot of groups that come from the same source. Right. So why are we fighting ourselves? It Good is question. Necessary. Good question. And uh, th I, I found it so beautiful, not just on the cultural level, but on, on the uniting level. And how we, we yes. need to, like you said, we need to uh, trumpet more of that and de-emphasize those things that actually Separate. Let me let me come but, in quickly with something, then we'll start our business. You, right. If you look at some of the groups, uh, let's look at the evening at uh, There are three groups there. There is a Molebiawe, Tekpebiawe, Kabiawe. If you trace one of the groups, they trace their ancestry to what? An Akan group. The other one, proper Ghanambe group. The other one, Ever group. All right. Uh, the old MP was talking about Pekis. I have families who are in Pekis. Who are in Peki? Right. And I tell you, you, you can understand why you have Akan names in there, all right? Recently, I spoke to one of the top MPP person and I told him that I have a, my great grandfather left a will and then the things that we see in that, he traces his route toward uh, Krobo land. And the man has been able to, you know, locate two homes there, <laughs> which I'm likely to visit one day. What are we talking about? All right. we, we belong to all groups. Right. All right. We need to emphasize on things that put us together right. and things that divide us. Even if we have different ethnic groups and all that, the important thing is that the corporate Ghana is what we need. We want to build it and see ourselves as what we people. Look at when we travel outside this country and we see a Ghanaian. We are not ready to look at where you come from in no. terms of ethnic yeah. No. But no. the Ghanaian, the corporate name Ghanaian is what you are interested in. Somebody saw me in a smoke in Skipo Airport, Amsterdam. And said he came to me directly. He said, "You are a Ghanaian." I said, "I am." <laughs> That's the spirit. You know, that now that you mentioned uh, Skipo <laughs> Airport, I have quite some fond memories there. But the last time I was there, the you, third time, you got lost re re recently. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't get lost. Actually, the first time I met was it the first or the second time I met uh, your former, your general secretary, okay, Kesiyedun okay. there. And but but this last time, which is recently. I actually met this Ghanaian. You know, they have where the you can join the rail. Yes, yes. That, that, yes. That the, internal, the internal risk. I saw this, you know, man, middle-aged man, maybe approaching 50, and he was one of those cleaning. You know, so when I got there, I took a look at him. You know, you know there's something about yeah. the look. A Nigerian can look at We can even look and yeah. see this one will be Kenyan, yeah, this yeah, one will be yeah. South African. Yeah, I took one good look at him. He asked us to excuse him because he was, but I said nothing. Later, he was done, and I called him and I said, "Ah, You know, and, and it was it was very interesting. So, indeed, correct. But let's let's get to the the substantive matter, the economy. Some say it is in shambles right now. Others say no, it is not, and we just need to take critical stock of where we are, put in the right measures, maybe get an IMF deal, and it will be sewn up. But looking at the economic crisis and uh, the finance minister and this motion of censure or vote of censure and the debate to be held in parliament, I'll start with you, Collins. What has led to this is the economic turmoil. So I was looking at the inflationary rate yesterday. 17 months back to back, inflation has been ticking up. 
And we're looking at an inflationary rate now of 40.4%. Uh, some days before the, you know, yesterday, I had predicted that it would hit 40. And it did, because the way things are escalating, <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you. When you look at the economy now, months ago we spoke. Yes. You shared your thoughts on the yeah. economy, fuel prices and all of that. Now diesel is 24 CDs. Uh, petrol is 18 CDs and all of that. What do you see in the economy and what, what do you think we can do, basically? Well, I, what I see is what the president said, and the president was emphatic. He said, we are in crisis. So the president himself has admitted that uh, we are in a situation where um, we quickly have to do something to salvage the situation. Um, as for the censure, I, I'm sure my colleague, uh, the NDC uh, rep, will speak to it because they are the people moving the motion. Uh, but of course, we must agree and accept that, yes, we are in crisis. The president, when he last spoke to Ghanaians, uh, did indicate some 12 steps that the government uh, intends to implement to help turn situations around. Yesterday, I listened to the, um, the gentleman uh, would do the, the, pet the petrol guys. There was the name. Uh, uh, Dan Kanamwe's group. Uh, group yeah. uh, Kopek. Kopek. Right. Predicting that from next week it will go down. It will go down. Right. That was a sigh of relief for me. Right. I was because the predictions so far have been yes, it's been, going up. Going it's up, going, up. going and, up. And honestly, Colin, yes. I have been praying. <laughs> no, I mean this is no. Some will say it's no praying. No, the point is that I, 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 when, I it, when diesel hit twenty four, I, I had been praying that look something would happen for it too. Yes. Because so it's it's just so it's it's it's, it's refreshing to right. hear that from next week, uh, petrol prices will be uh, going down. I am aware, and the president did indicate that government is in the process of um, getting other sources of fuel, which might be cheaper. Some have said that is totally unrealistic. We've spoken to industry people, including well, Duncan that, himself, that's I'm saying and they tell you about the, oh, but you know, the you know, sheer... No, but you know Russia is even selling... The sheer impossibility. But you know Russia is selling at a reduced Oh, yes, we know. I, and we brought up that yes, in, yes. in the so conversation. That, but you also know the consequences of you know, taking... I'm Russia saying higher. that government is saying that they intend to get other sources, mm. which are cheaper, mm. to ensure that at least going forward, the prices, uh, the escalation will just come down. Yeah. Fortunately, OPEC is, uh, COPEC is predicting mm. that from next week, uh, things to stabilize. Uh, the dollar situation, the exchange rate situation over the last week has been quite stab stab uh, stabilized, if right. you look at it. Right. When it's shot up all the way to 15, when it was inching to the 16 area, it was it very square. Hit 16, I yes. Think. Fortunately, now it's hovering around 13, and it's been so for the past one week or so. That is good news. Um, the IMF. But, but, but let me just hold you there. I'm, I'm sorry I'm no, interjecting. No but when it comes to the 13 figure, uh, as of Yesterday, I mean, in the last week or so, you would see the Bank of Ghana put a fig figure of 13 point something yes. there. But I'll go back to that placket at the Kumi Preko demonstration. Someone said the Bank of Ghana has the rates, but Abuchi has the dollar. But it's always and, and, and the, the reality is it's, it's when you go out there, yes, my brother, it's, it's the business community, the, 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 uh, one of the representatives of Aboa, the yes. uh, a Doom business group, they said that, Masa, the Bank of Ghana is putting those rates out there. If you want the dollar and you go out there, you are not getting it for anything less than 14 CDs. But what I'm saying is that it's always been so. Bank of mm -hmm. Ghana rate has always been lower than uh, what happens outside. But however, it gives an indication. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, for the past week or two, it's been stab stabilized, which is quite okay for us. Mm -hmm. We're praying that going forward, um, the rates will even come down further. Right. Uh, we know that the IMF negotiations are ongoing. Uh, my indication is that, and even from the last statement from the finance ministry, they hope to have a staff agreement by the end of the year. Uh, hopefully by first quarter next year, uh, we should have a, a, a program in place. So these are all things that government is trying to push to ensure that we have a quick turnaround of the economy. The, 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 the indicators are pointing towards a very interesting direction, which I'm happy about. The budget... I, I was just about to get to that. When yes, the budget... About uh, first quarter of next year, because you know, initially, uh, I had interacted with uh, Georgina Go Jogi yeah. Cristalina Georgieva, who had said that, look, uh, hopefully by end of year, we want Ghana to get a package. That had been confirmed by our political you know, establishment. And now we are getting the indication that it may not no, necessarily... Our, our, political, not our necessarily. political establishment, the statement that I read from mm. the finance ministry mm. was very clear. And they said by the end of the year, 
the hope to have a staff agreement. Yes, which is what I am saying. Yes, that, staff agreement. That, that, I want no, you to get no, no, a staff. Well, well, not necessarily a staff agreement. What, what I had heard was that hopefully by end of year we would have you know, an agreement, an IMF deal, which is why November 15 was pegged. I mean, officially, that is what the, 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 the rules uh, demand. But now that this has happened, let me just ask you, what, what does it do to our budget reading? Because oh, for, for the budget reading, I'm told the, the IMF team will come in and normally they have some thematic areas that they agree on. Right. It will feed into the budget presentation. You don't necessarily have to wait for the program itself before you can read the budget. Right. However, you can agree on some fundamental issues with the, with the, in, with principle. The, in principle. Right. And that should feed into um, uh, the budget uh, reading. And I'm told the budget reading has been moved from 15th to the 24th, um, still within the constitutional mandate. Uh, but hopefully, uh, the agreement that is going to take place within these few days will have a positive reflection. Uh, industry players and for us as politicians and not everybody, we are looking at what the budget will indicate to us. And I'm sure uh, the budget, um, this budget is a very, very important budget because it has to give an indication of government's intentions, of government programs, how government intends people to cut expenditures and all that. So let's wait and see how it goes. But yes, the, the president was quite emphatic that we are in crisis. I am happy that so far after his um, pronouncement uh, over the weekend, uh, we've seen some uh, positive uh, reflection. Uh, as I said, COPEC is predicting a reduction in the fuel prices. Hopefully this will continue. All right. Uh, let me come briefly to Roxen on, on this bit. Uh, the last time we spoke, I mean, you were bemoaning the problems in the economy. What, what, has, what, what has changed for you as an individual? What has changed for your constituents, for example, the people you represent? Briefly on that. Now, um, nothing has changed. Things are rather deteriorated. Mm. Or in other words, the change has been a negative change. On 24th of March this year, 2022, on a Thursday morning, the finance minister issued right. a very long statement mm -hmm. and termed it measures to recover the economy. In that statement, he indicated that we were having high inflation, we were having rapid deterioration of the city, general general inflationary trend in terms of high prices of goods and commodities and high debt portfolio and revenue mobilization difficulties okay and so he came out with certain measures and according to his statement particularly from paragraph two and three of the statement he indicated that they they reach they reach this agreement as measures to recover the economy based on some cabinet retreat they had in Pedroasi, in Accra, and elsewhere. Some of the key things they indicated that they would do was that there would be a 10% reduction in, 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 the, in the expenditure, in nominal expenditure or, or concessional expenditure. They also agreed that there would be a 30% cut in the salaries of um, government appointees, of mm -hmm. presidential staffers and ministers of state. Right. They also said there will be a 50% reduction in fewer coupons that they give to presidential staffers and ministers and, and government appointees. In addition to that, they said that they were going to ensure that every item imported to our ports the appropriate duties will be paid. So they term it no duty, no exit. In addition, government indicated to us in March that they were also going to streamline borrowing. Again, government said that as part of the measures to recover the, the, the dwindling economy, mm -hmm. They were going to prioritize only ongoing projects and not inaugurate, uh, not um, cast sort for new ones to be started. Right. Finally, government said they were going to ensure that goods names on the on the public payroll were going to be expunged. 
And so I was hoping that right from April this year, these measures will kick in. Indeed, government also said they were not going to buy new vehicles. There was going to be a moratorium on foreign travels. All right? I didn't say these things. Government said these things to us on, in March this year. So I was hoping that from April this year, the measures will kick in. And that as soon as the media budget was read, media review budget was presented. We entered, we entered July, August, September. Would have seen the fruits of these measures. Rather, things deteriorated further. Mm. Only for the president himself. And mind you, these this 24th March measures were issued in the name of the president. Only for the president himself to come up again in November or October, at the end of October 2022, with a new set of measures. Mm. So I am asking, what, what has been the policy, the policy outcome? What, have, what, what has been the policy outcome of the, of the policy of ensuring that all imported items into the country, the appropriate duties were paid? We want to know. What is government, what is the implication for reducing public expenditure by 30%? Which, which expenditure lines were affected? We need to know. And what benefit it brought to the economy? We need to know. What is, what is the effect of the moratorium on foreign travel except the essential ones? As we speak, persons are in Egypt. Supposedly, you're, you're, you're bringing up the, the matter of 300. Yes. Mm. But, but, no, but you've no, no, you no, heard no, the explanation, no, right? No, no. This is very important. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll let, let you me. go ahead. Let me, let me just say this so that when you add up, yes. it, it includes that. You know that there's been an explanation that not all of those going if, are if being you, funded by government if, and that there are if you NGOs, permit, if you permit, other groups being funded by the UNFCCC and all of that. If you permit me, if you permit me, last year when they went to Glasgow in Scotland, when, uh, it was that a was, similar number. That was COP26. Six. Six. That was 337. Mm. Government gave similar explanation. Right. And we said... Right. That was totally unacceptable. And it's included NDC members. Oh, that is immaterial. It's very material. Oh, Say that. No. It's NDC, included listen, members NDC, of the NDC. NDC members are not in government. In fact, in Egypt now, oh. NDC members are part of the team. You mm. see, Colin, when you do this, people won't take you seriously. But, 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 oh, but, 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 but let me do this. Let, let me do this. To, to, to both of you gentlemen, before I bring in Dr. Asante. Before I bring in Dr. Asante. I'm very quiet. Roxen, so I just want you to look at this. Yes, he mentioned that members of your party may be in there. But but when you look at the numbers, I mean... No, no, I'm making a point. Hold on, hold on. No, you eat away my time. I will not. I will not. Okay. I promise not to. Okay. I understand when the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources is there, Energy Minister, and a few others who are there. But but this contingent, yes. the, 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 the size of it, Collins, yes. looking at our country, our economy, climate change is a big issue, but does 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 it warrant this number? Regardless but of but even, but even if it is half half of those in there. But you just made the point. No, 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 I've made it, but I need to know the other side of no, it but as you well. I'll let him come back. Not all the, the all the people over there are not sponsored. I'm saying by it's government. not all of them. Yes, they're not sponsored. But even by if government. it's half of them. That's How do you know that half of them are sponsored by government? If you look at the figure, the one fifty that was. No, unless you get given I don't have the breakdown. The, if you, you get the breakdown, you should have had the minute the breakdown. No, if you have the breakdown, what the minister so, said. this is what government government I'll, sponsors. I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you shortly. Then that's fine. But even if it were hundred, are you are you okay with that? Government? Yes, a hundred. I don't know exactly. No, I'm saying you say you were putting, and I'm saying even if it were a hundred, would you be okay? That would be a high number. Okay. Yeah, that would okay, be please go ahead. You see, I, I'm making this point to feed into the fact that government said this year there will be a moratorium on foreign travels, except the essential ones, right. the statutory ones. Now, somebody tried to explain that they are not using public funds and that they are, they are being sponsored by donor partners and bilateral, uh, through bilateral agreements. And, and this chief director has forgotten that as part of our budgetary allocations, don funds from donor partners are factored in. Mm. When we are making budgetary allocations, when the agencies come, they tell you that this year they expect X amount of money from our donor partners. That is factored into the expenditure lines for the year. 
So that is also part of the public money. It's public funds. Once the donors give us money, that is public funds. We are supposed to apply it reasonably. Mm. So she shouldn't say that because it is not the taxpayers' money, the money has come from our foreign partners. They can spend it the way they like. Is, is funding these people, you know about the challenges of climate change and what we're going I'm through. I'm aware. Is it, is it, is it, no, you use the word reasonable. Is yes. it unreasonable? It's unreasonable to say that for you to attend a global climate change to make a statement of impact, you need 332 people from one country. 322, right. You, you understand? It's so, 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 so unreasonable. It doesn't make economic sense. Because we have, we have ambassadors in Egypt. So we could send a skeletal team from, a, particularly when last year, this matter brought, a, brought, a, brought about a lot of bruha. Mm. And I guess and, when, when you also consider that, look, the event is from November 6th to November 18th. Yeah. We don't know how long some of these people will be there. But if you consider per diem, when you consider accommodation, when you consider feeding and all of that. All those go, all those go into, the, into the expenditure, the level of expenditure on one single seminar, international seminar. But, but that is just by, by the by. I'm further asking that when government said they were going to expunge all the ghost names from the payroll, to, to, to give Brita to, to, to government. What, is the, what, is, what have they done by October 2022? This was said in March 2022. When government said that they were going to ensure that only ongoing new projects, only ongoing projects will be completed. What has been the effect since March or April this year until October 2022? Between April and October 2022, I have seen the president cast out for new pro more than 10 new projects between that time. So you see, when the MPP says to look up, you must look down. <laughs> when the president says that part of his measures to recover this collapsed economy is to wait for an IMF intervention, that cannot be a measure. Okay. Right when the president says that he, the, the measures that he wants to put in place will take effect from about 2028, that cannot be a measure. Because he will not be in office in 2028. But we must plan into the future, right? Deal with the matters now, independence now, not tomorrow. If we are planning for, for now, if somebody, it tomorrow. Somebody planned for t tomorrow. You came to disagree with him. So what is the guarantee that what you are doing, another president will come and agree with you? So do things that are within your, your term of office. That okay. is what the people want to see. We'll, we'll come back to that because the, the vote of... I, 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 was, I was going to my final very point. Quickly, they were going to vote. reduce fuel, fuel the, the, the cost of fuel. Mm. We have is eight, it the latest what the president no, said about... No, in March, in, as part of the economic right. measures, mm. to bring comfort to the people. Mm. There were some reductions, weren't there? No. There were reductions you were, by a few persuades. Oh. There were reductions. Can I finish? Now, between, between April and October 2022, fuel prices have gone up about 60 times. I'm not saying it. This is a report. So that between 2020 and, 20, and October 2022, fuel has been increased over 104 times. This is a report put out by some lady called Sasu. Mm. I can pull the article for you. He, she, she did a calculation nearly on a weekly basis. Mm. So when the government said they were going to reduce the prices of fuel to, so that they are able to bring comfort to we the consumers, fuel prices have rather escalated. And we are asking government, the eight tax components on fuel pricing, price stabilization, and debt recovery, and all that, why government won't lift at least three off of the list, so that the people can have some comfort, but they won't do it. And okay. yet they said that they will reduce fuel prices. Okay. So the measures, the measures that the president himself has put out, those twelve measures are no measures at all. They are no measures at all, right? Uh, of course, the president, Dr. Sasanti, the president also talks about import substitution and all of that. I mean, those are crucial areas. I, I don't even know why we're still here because we should have been 
uh, dealt with those situations decades ago. But if we're still here, even on the back of 1D, 1F, it also points to the inadequacies in our system. But we've been talking about on the finance bit, yes, the censure, but what has led to this situation? We're talking about inflation, which has now hit 40.4%. We're talking about the 322 in Egypt and how some people say, regardless of the situation, you heard Colin say that even if it were 100, it's still on a high uh, side. And now fuel prices as well. For you, what, what do you make of, of all of these happenings? Are, are we acting in the right ways? looking at the economic situation we find ourselves in? Uh, no, no. Why am I saying that? Uh, there are issues that um, can be looked at when you want to explain this thing. But three, I want to mention them, how we have arrived in here. One is through indiscipline. And two is what? Um, lack of prudence in management of state resources. And the third one, uh, it's uh, policy problems, policy problems. Look at indiscipline. If you look at the issue of the way we've handled resources in this country, I have no doubt in my mind that we have been very indisciplined in that regard. We are inviting IMF in. IMF will come with two things, with resources, and then will ensure that there's a strict uh, compliance to the rules of the game. That tells you that once you call in IMF and they are coming, they will ensure that discipline will work and that will what lift the game for you. Uh, if you look at the, 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 the measures that the president talked about um, and then some of the proposals that he made, um, it, it tells you that, look, uh, we are in discipline. Uh, we are either in discipline or we are abusing resources of the state. Um, look at the issue of, um, you know, reducing imports and trying to make sure that we make do with what we produce here uh, uh, internally. This is import substitution, which you have already said, that we should have dealt with a long time. This issue of policy, all right, it's an issue of policy. If you have any policy which is not working, uh, you have to take a second look at the policy. And there are three things that go with that. You either maintain the policy because you have examined and it's good, or you throw the policy away because you think it doesn't worth its salt. Or three, you look at the policy and realize that there's a need for some re-engineering. In all these things, look at the policies, the economic policy of this country. Is it the case that the government took it seriously and then examined them, evaluated them, and then decided that they will improve upon it. Right. The performance that we are seeing now, the results, uh, tells me that uh, that was not done. And any time people talk about that, the president praises his minister. They are doing uh, excellent work. Is that the excellent result that we are seeing? If your ministers are performing and, uh, so high, why would you go to IMF, which we know that going there, there are a lot of conditions that will not inure necessarily to our benefit and all that, right? Look at the issue of corruption, all right? The Transparency International Report is there for all of us to see from right from 2017 when the president assumed office up to today, right. all right? The highest uh, that the, in terms of better performance that this country has done uh, is about 43%. And let us remember that the closer you are to zero on their scale, it means that you have not managed corruption very well. Today, uh, that has 2021, corruption is pegged at 43% on the transparency international scale. It tells you that you are closer to what? Uh, zero. And once you are closer, you are not managing corruption well. Look at the issue of waste in the system. And evidence can be seen in Auditor General reports. We have also seen the area of what corruption or that we have not dealt with it uh, head on. All these things put together has brought us what, where we are now. Um, I believe that, yes, it is a good thing to go to the IMF because we have no option than to go there and make sure that we, we, we get some breather and right. come and right the wrongs. But my worry is that any time we get a little breather, we are likely to throw away the policies that are able to put us at the right free, right? That is my worry. Uh, mm. So all the talk about the economy, we'll do this, we'll do this. It is my hope and prayer that we'll do them. 
but right. that we have to be very careful that when we become stable, we don't throw them away. Otherwise, we go back to square one. And you, you make an interesting point by, there. And it, I am happy that this is happening now because if it does, we saw what happened the last time we went to the IMF and an electoral year. Interestingly, our spending was reduced. You know, we, we, we were able to do quite a lot. And that was a good thing because in election years or electoral years, we tend to spend a lot. And we saw what happened from 2014 to 2016 when the elections were held. So I'm hoping that maybe this time it will impact election 2024 and spending will be curbed. We will not see some of the outrageous, absurd uh, spending on government's books that, that we tend to see. But let me come back uh, quickly into the studio. Collins. So there's this vote of censure uh, situation that is being brought forth. The minority started it. I mean, especially after you, the majority MPs, uh, 80 of you had said, listen, uh, things must change. Something must happen. The finance minister must go. If not, we're not going to attend to government business on the floor of parliament and all of that. There was a resolution, a.k.a. interacting with, uh, you know, Mr. President, who said, give me some time. Let him deliver the, the budget statement and all that. Let the debates happen. And, but, but there was nothing concrete about what would happen after that. So people have been asking, look, is that to say after he you know, delivers the budget statement and all of that, he will step aside? We still don't know. We don't have clarity on that. Recently, the majority leader said that all of you are now behind his ousting as a majority side. What then do you make of this vote of censure, which the minority has forcefully uh, put forward? <clears throat> well, um, you've just reiterated uh, our position very, very clearly. 80 of our members had a press conference, called on the president to make some changes at the finance ministry. Subsequently, there was a caucus meeting. The caucus then decided that uh, we go to speak to the president with, a, with one voice. And the voice was that caucus was behind the initial call by the 80. So as the majority leader said, it's now a caucus decision. It's not about 80 people or 90 people. The caucus wants some changes at the finance ministry. We met the president. And the president then uh, also put a request to us that based on the timing, he expects that he requests that the finance minister uh, present the budget and then probably appropriation. And then we revisit this issue about uh, changes at the ministry. What is important is that the president did not uh, object to our request. All he said was that he also put in a counter request. So that is our roadmap. Our roadmap is that an understanding we have with the president is that, yes, the finance minister will come to parliament, present his budget, and then subsequently, we revisit the issue of changes at the ministry. This uh, censure motion is the NDC strategy to get the, some changes at the finance ministry. As a party... So our, it is not the majority strategy? It's not a majority strategy. The end point is the same, but that is not our strategy. And it's very clear, based on the communique from our, our party hierarchy, that we are not going to be part of this particular censure motion. Our uh, strategy to have changes at the ministry is the, is the dialogue we had with our president, is the press conference we had, is the position of the majority, and we intend to go through that particular process. Uh, we are not prepared to fall for the NDC's uh, censure motion. That is their strategy as to whether to... Do you, do you think it is wrong? No, 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 they have the right to do so. It's, it's constitutional. If they feel that something is happening, they want some changes, they can go through that process. Mm. Our only departure is that the processes they want to uh, use in getting changes at the ministry is differ from ours. We have made ours very clear. We had a press conference as a caucus. We've made our point very clear. We've met our president. We've had some agreement with the president. So be it. We are going to go according to the timetable that we had with the president. The minority's decision to have a censure, that is their strategy. And as the communicate from our party said, we are not going to be part of this particular censure. So, some have said, even this morning, you know, interacting with Kina Likimani, uh, of Odikro and, and in previous conversations with her that your, your position as a majority has failed and will continue to fail because you, you especially when you backed down the first time after having interacted with Mr. Pres President, it meant that, I mean, from, to, from all intents, uh, according to Kinali Kimani, there's no intent for Mr. President to oust Ken Oforiata. So this is just another game that will... I, I, I didn't get that impression. You don't, you don't, I, I, don't, I didn't don't. get that impression when we met the president. So what impression exactly did you get? The president did not dismiss our request. He did not. 
Mm. He did not say, no, I'm not going to sack the, the minister. I'm not going to have any changes at the, at the ministry. Mm. He said, yes. He also listens. He has heard what Ghanaians and other people are talking about. All he requested for was that at this crucial moment of the negotiation and the budget preparation, we should allow the minister to present the budget. So, 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 so when, exactly, when exactly do we see the back of Ken Ofoyata then? If he's admitted that Ghanaians want to see the back of Ken Ofoyata, in other words, to see him go, the, the president when, was, when is that? The president was clear. We should allow him to finish his uh, budget uh, preparation and budget uh, presentation, probably after the appropriation. We re revisit the issue. We don't want to fall for the NDC strategy. It's as simple as so, that. So revisiting our, the issue, uh, we have revisiting own, that issue, there is no clear time. It, it could be at the end of next year. I, it could I, be I, anything, I, I and, and no one knows. The impression I got from the president when we met him and the impression I'm getting from the rank and file of our party is that after this, some changes will happen. And we are not prepared to fall for the NDC. They can go for their... Uh, the, the style. So you are in agreement that Ken should go, all of you, according to what the majority leader has that said. That is the position of the majority. But, but that is you, the position of you, the majority. You will not participate in a vote of censure. We will not. All that right. is the position of the majority. So, so let me let me come to Roxon then, because when you look at Article 82 on the vote of censure or a motion of censure, it says Parliament may by a resolution supported by the votes of not less than two thirds of all the members of Parliament pass a vote of censure on a Minister of State. Uh, a motion for the resolution referred to in clause one of this article shall not be moved in Parliament unless A. Seven days notice has been given. B. I'm shortening some of them. The notice for the motion has been cited by not less than one third of all the members of Parliament. The motion shall be debated in Parliament within 14 days after the receipt by the Speaker. A Minister of State in respect of whom a vote of censure, censure is debated under clause three of this article is entitled during the debate to be heard in his defence. Where a vote of censure is passed against the minister under this article, the president may, unless the minister resigns from his office, revoke his appointment as a minister. And finally, for the avoidance of doubt, this article applies to a deputy minister as it applies to a minister of state. But when you look at the first point, by a resolution supported by the votes of not less than two thirds, you don't have two thirds in, in parliament. Why are you pushing this? Is it not um, a wild goose chase? At all. The minority is At all. embarking on. Now, let the record reflect that the NDC, from about 2008, 2018, have been calling on the president to dismiss the finance minister. Right. And this, this position had been re-echoed by the Honorable Ezekiel Dongo on mm. many, many, many occasions. 2018. 2018. On many, many occasions by the ranking member, uh, Dr. Atu Forsen, on many, many occasions, by myself, by other members who get the opportunity to speak. Now, when the president got his second term and had to reappoint some persons, the current finance minister was reappointed. He was sick at the time of his reappointment. It took him about three weeks. The whole country had to wait mm. for him to come back, for him to be vetted specially. Mm. But sickness is not a bar. And when he got, no, you know, when he contracted COVID, uh, just, no. just to make a point, when he contracted COVID, of course, these things you cannot predetermine. I also I remember that I the majority leader I didn't even, had to. I didn't even say mm. what sort of sickness it was. Oh, no, I mean... But it's not, he, he contracted he, a sickness. He, he put out an official statement that he was, he was going to seek for medical attention. Right. Right. Now, in the Constitution, medical grounds is one of the bases upon which you, you can be removed from office. If you cannot perform mm. as a result of some medical... Problem. You mentioned he was only away for three weeks. I said he was away for three weeks. Mm -hmm. We had to wait for him, mm -hmm. for him to return, mm -hmm. to be vetted specially. Parliament doesn't do that. Parliament was made to wait. In any other country, another person would have been nominated. Mm. It didn't happen. You recall that was why the, 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 the budget had to be presented by the majority. I was just about to remind you that he, you. he had to do that. So someone, Thank in you. fact, was nominated. No, not, not nominated as a finance minister. Oh, you mean but to he replace... was then a minister of state. Right. So within our constitutional architecture, any minister of state could who acts instead of the, the substantive mm. if it's able to carry out the functions of office. All 
this, we were told. Anytime we call for the dismissal of Oriata, we were told by the majority that he was the best thing that ever happened to this republic. That he was the best finance minister this country ever had. They told us in parliament. During the E-Levy, they won't let us sleep. They told us that the introduction of E-Levy was everything. It was the panacea to everything. E-Levy came and collapsed. What they expected didn't happen. They shouted that don't go to IMF today. They, are, they have a cap in hand and they are before IMF. You have called a press conference. And he was among the 12 who faced the media. I was not at the press conference. You were not there. No. I thought I spotted you. No, I was not. Okay, I withdraw that. <laughs> 12 of them faced the media. Right. And told the media that unless their president removes the finance minister, they were not going to cooperate. Mm. They appear, called. Appear they, to a, look, a, 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 to call for a press conference, such a serious matter, mm. unless he's sitting here and telling us that to hold press conference is just a child's play. We have not backed down on that. You have. We have not. Can I finish? I was quiet. You told the whole world that you were calling on your president, on your government to remove your finance minister and, and, and one other minister of state at the Minister of Finance. Edubwahim. The Honorable Edubwahim. Mm. Some of us are, are even adding the governor of the central bank. And I was about to get to that, but since you've, you've you, already you, gone you, there, you, 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 you understand. Interestingly, I think he was voted recently, I think, one of the best uh, He's governors, the best. governors a, in, a, on the continent a, of a, Africa. Any a, a, a institution that will vote Dr. Addison as one of the best in anything is not serious, given the kind of indicators we have in this country. Really? It should be removed. Hmm. Now, in that press conference, you told the whole world that you had some other 80, in fact, you know, you were about 80. That you, the group that was holding the press conference at the time, was the representative of the 80. Mm. It generated some internal turmoil that morning. But somehow, the leader of the house and the majority leader, and the leader of your caucus, and the leader of the house, put out a statement that the initial position by the 80 and, and the, uh, MPP MPs has now metamorphosed into the position of the majority group. That is the entirety of That is the entirety of the N MPP MPs in parliament, or the majority group, because there's an independent person, uh, 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 member of parliament, doing business with them. That is how serious the matter has become. Any serious government should have acted on this position. Mm. Then you come back, then your party writes to you and say that the constitutional provision, which gives the look, if you call a press conference, it is a mere declaration of intention. Let's 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 hold on, I, hold on. I, I, let me, I get let that me point. Finish. Let but me finish. It, it, it's been it's been made clear. Let yes. me finish. Can it, I it's finish? not it's not um, anything you can just can play can with. I, but but I, the point is the, the, the point, Roxanne, is that they are saying the approach you want to take is not the approach they no, want but to you, you that they maintain. The, you, you ask this stance. question. So let me address it. A press conference is not the process to, to ensure the removal of a minister of state. It mm. is not. Mm. It is a mere declaration of intention. So if you were truly minded to carry out your intent, your declared intent, that you want the minister removed, it is, it is Article 82 that gives you the procedure. They won't do it. <laughs> now we have gone ahead to carry out our long-standing call to have the minister removed and file the proper motion as out as enshrined the constitution. Then you take it out and say that you, you won't support us. You are, you are not deceiving anybody. You haven't deceived the people. What, what, what then do you think this was? Because they went, if, if Mr. President hadn't, you know, intervened, yes. they would have carried out their threat of not, you know, entertaining government business. So are you suggesting what they did was a mere charade? I want to it, it, it was It was more than a charade. Mm. It was more than a mere charade. It was actually deceitful to say that, look, for the president to even say that, okay, give me time for me to carry out your, your, your position, shows that you meant... What you are declared. But, but there must also be a listening caucus, right? You, of course. You, you don't adopt a situation or... Of course. Or you think... You think <laughs> a position you, where you think, you, you you think never they change. just woke up one day and held that press conference. Mm. It, didn't, it didn't happen out of the blue. There have been discussions. Okay. And the discussions have collapsed. That is why they came out openly. Okay. I, I mean, this is clear. You we, know, we, so I am saying that 
The only provision in the constitution that allows you to carry out what you are supposed to do as a member of parliament is to file a motion. Let me ask you a quick question so I can, I can move on to Doc as well. How do you mean to execute this? You need two thirds of parliament. They say on block, they are not going along with you. It means you don't have two thirds of parliament. We, we may not have two thirds, but the people of the Republic of Ghana will see the MPP for who they are. <laughs> so, so you admit that, you know, uh, they you're, you're going to fail on this one. Sorry? You're going to fail on this one. We may fail. That. As you speak, I've cited the, sec the letter from their Secretary General asking them, uh, by way of a three-line whip, to abstain from, from, from the process. We'll go ahead as the minority caucus and vote. Mm. And let the record bear us out that we filed a motion of censure, we voted, and we got defeated. Mm. That the people who held a press conference and followed it up with a, with, with a public statement that they were, they, were truly in, they were truly of the strongest intent to have the government remove the finance minister. When it got to the business of getting, making sure that the finance minister got removed through a motion of censure, they resailed from it. I, I have a quick question for you, Collins. I know you have a reaction. Uh, these kinds of votes, how are they conducted? You remember the Speaker of Parliament, you know, selecting a speaker and what, what, what I happened? Think, I think it's by... Uh, secret vote. Yes. 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 Secret, secret ballot. So secret, secret ballot. ballot. Yes. Are, are you afraid that maybe, yes, you may have this position as the majority, but like we saw when Speaker Bagbin was actually uh, my, elected, my, maybe some of your members would be swayed? My, my brother used some very, very strong words to, the, to us as a party, that we are deceiving Ghanaians, let Ghanaians know that. Yes, I'm truly disappointed. Okay. In 2000, he says, as far back as 2018, right. they started calling for the removal of the finance minister. Then we won election. And then in 2000, 2021, the president renominated the finance minister. Right. What happened during his approval? And, and that's the point to be made. In I'm fact, saying, in fact, no, like, see, I'm coming. No, no, no. He's made a point. No, he's I'm, I'm, about, I, I am giving you about, what yes, happened. Because he's talking about deceit. Mm. He's talking about deceit. Mm. From 2018, when he says they were calling for the removal of the finance minister, mm -hmm. in 2021, there was a consensus approval. Yes. Which included the members of the NDC. Mm. Let Ghanaians also know. Let Ghanaians also know who is deceiving them. Your, your side was part who of is the, deceiving the, the group them. that cleared the you finance You cleared minister. the finance minister. You were there. Now, now, now you I, are here talking about we, be, we are let, deceiving let, let, Ghanaians. Let, 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 now, now, now can I finish? No, no, let, him, no, let, let me finish. Him, let him finish. Let him finish. You said we are deceitful and that we take a position and we shift. Yes. What happened in 2021? Oh, I will, I will what happened? I will rebut. What kind of a consensus a approval of the finance minister? The same finance minister. The same person that you've been chanting that you should go from 2018. You did not have the courage. Mm. You did not. You approved him by consensus. Mm. It was on the floor. We all debated. It was a consensus a approval. Where is the honesty? Where is the honesty that today you are rather coming to this big platform and calling the MPP deceitful. Collins, thank you for the point. Where is your honesty? Where, now, where, my, what is your locus in this? My, my, honesty, my honesty lies in the fact that the president mm. came to parliament to say that we should give him another opportunity to salvage the economy. We should give him the opportunity to rely on the state. If you were vehemently opposed hold to on, the finance minister hold on, and you felt hold on, that he could hold not on, hold salvage on, the economy, hold on, why would you hold, yeah. hold on, you give people a second chance. <laughs> you give in this world, you give people a second chance. So the minority decided to give Keno Foyata a second no, chance. No, the president told us that he wants to keep the team that he was using and that we should give him a second chance because we're all in a COVID situation. We we're recovering from a COVID economy, a COVID ravaged economy. Are you saying that you approved the finance minister because the president said we are in the COVID economy? Ah, what did the Is president say? Ah, what did the president say? Ah, then you are not principled. I am principled. You are not principled. Oh, no, 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 no. You then see, as a party, you no, are not principled. We are principled. You are not. We are principled. You sit there and call no. the MPP. Yes, yes, yes. You are are deceitful. you in 2018? You, you are, are calling for the oh. minister to go, but you come back to parliament to approve the same person. No. And you are talking I about the saying. Your father, and you're saying that you are the minister oh, because the president hold said on. you are in COVID. Hold on. Is that your reason? Didn't the president say that? But, but, but is that also, your reason? Didn't the president hold, hold on, gentlemen. Also, also, the president also, is that your reason? No, hold on. The president hold on, say, gentlemen. Is that your reason? Didn't the president say that? Roxen and Collins. I have a question. So you didn't have any point after the president said that? Gentlemen. Three seconds. Three seconds. Ah, you are saying that 
we are deceitful. Yes. Right. And that you, you yes. made a point and you have turned around. Yes. I am right. saying you are more deceitful. No, okay. we are not. Hold on. 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 Hold to approve hold on, hold on. All right, hold I'm on. going to turn you off your microphone on. if, if hold we on. continue you, like this. Hold on. I'm not calling this. Oh. We'll turn on off your microphone if you want. Why are you talking? I was quiet. Hold on, oh, hold I was on. quiet. Roxy, hold on. Ah. Hold on, no, hold on. No, no. We are all V-mates here. Let's, yeah. let's, let's just be, do this. Don't, don't be unruly this morning. V-mates. Sharp, 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 sharp. All right, let's do this. I just have a quick question. He says, in life, you must give a second chance to people. I understand what you're saying. You were mooting that... The finance minister go yes i understand both of you from yes. different angles yes. but i'd like to find out if they had adopted if they had played hardball at that time that is the minority how would you have taken it i don't know how i would have taken it i'm getting confused with the question no, no, because, be because, very clear no, question. Very because very clear. You're, you're on the other end, you could have also said that they were being in time that we should give this my second chance oh but then you, you see you, you came here and say that we are deceitful. Yes, right. because we've taken a position, we've yes. changed our yes. position. And I'm saying that you can't say so with your record. I can't say so. You can't. Okay, okay. let me. You let, don't let, have let, that let right me, to let say me so. Let me finish. You, you don't. Didn't allow me to. You can't say so. Didn't allow me to finish. You can't say so. Now, I am, I am saying so because the finance minister has not called the majority caucus that please give me a second chance. He hasn't said so. Mm. <laughs> he hasn't told them that. He's been quiet. So now you approve the finance minister in 2021 because the president said. Because of COVID. Ah, no, no, yes, didn't, didn't your president say that? Brother, is that what he said? No, he said we should. The give basis to oh. approve the finance minister is because of COVID. You, you, that so I can. I he can. said we have a, a COVID ravaged economy. So we should keep the finance minister. Thank you. And okay. so that, that, that was the And so we agree with Dr. Asante. Let, let me bring you in. And the man has performed <laughs> worse. I see you smiling. I know you have a whole yes. lot. Go ahead, shoot. Yes. Um, it is getting interesting. But there is one thing that is clear that listening to the MPP MP, mm. uh, I get the impression, and it, it ties up to the, the statement by the General Secretary that uh, they should, members should now take part in the voting. Um, mm. I am disappointed in this. Why am I disappointed? Because uh, the 80 people who came out, they came out strongly that there is something wrong that they thought that the minister would have been able to what, uh, salvage the economy. For as he being the officer uh, at the forefront of the implementation of any uh, policy regarding to the economy, he should have done that. So on that basis, they wanted him out. And then they met the president and the rest of the story. We know them too clearly not to repeat them here. Right. But I am, I am disappointed in the sense that, look, you brought everybody's hope high that you have found something within your party which is not, uh, you know, palatable, that... Uh, managers of the economy are not doing well, especially the finance minister. So you want him to go. That resonated with the views of most people in this country. And I said, yes, thumbs up. All right. Then in no time, you turn around and saying that, yes, you met the president and the president has spoken to you and all that. I agree that you have a leader. Uh, that is the president. So, yes, since governance is about dialogue, you dialogue and then this is the position. All right. Now, the, the, you also came back to tell us through the majority leader that, look, it's not even the 80 people alone, but that all the members of the MPP side are in support of that position. That, that strengthens your position that, look, anytime you get opportunity, you will kick the minister. And that this is the opportunity that the MDC present to you. That yes, all that you have been dreaming uh, of, all that you are hoping for yourself, this is a time. And the time now, you want to what? Uh, back out, right? And then you describe it that, that it's not part of your strategy. I don't have a problem with that. But the reality is that the economy is in crisis. The reality is that voters normally stand on the economy as one of the important variables in deciding who they want to renew the mandate in terms of governance or give their mandate to. Right. So I think that the MPP will not be oblivious of this fact and that... All the things that have brought us here, which I've already recounted them, the issue of indiscipline is what is one of the factors that has brought us here. Because if we're disciplined enough, we'll be able to check corruption, we'll be okay. able to right all the wrongs, okay. and then we'll not call in IMF. Mm. The issue of what policy failure is another thing which I have talked about, and that they have to consider it so seriously. Mm. Because 
all the issues we're talking about, the economy didn't do this, inflation, that these are policy failures right. that, for me, the government did not take, you know, serious note of. Because if you have a failure in inflation, or inflation is getting very high, then it tells you what is the economic management team doing? Because they are part of what? The, the uh, supervisors of the policy uh, implementation. Right. If you, the policy itself is failing, then you ask yourself, uh, has got, uh, you know, cabinet and the president taking that matter up? Because policy emanates from the head of state with the support of cabinet. So what is cabinet also doing? All these three groups, the cabinet, plus the president, plus economic management team, and then the finance ministry, they have a responsibility to make sure that they bring this uh, economy back to life. It is something the president has promised us that, yes, if we lose people, we can bring them to life. Okay. But the economy, if there's something wrong, this is the time that we want the president and his team of what uh, ministers and all that to deal with this thing head on for us. The okay. issue about you said this, you did not say that. Uh, the reality will dawn on all of us very soon. Okay. That uh, there are issues when you, you take such a strong position. There are also instances where you need the support on the other side that they don't be surprised when they disappoint you. We have also okay. seen in the NDC where the government showed goodwill that I'm going to work with the MMDC issue. NDC at the last minute, shaken out. And, you know, in politics, it's, uh, the, the issue of what paying back uh, people doesn't help anybody. If we okay. are serious about building the state, all that we need is what consensus. What is not good is not good. It's not the case that maybe the Mr. President said that maintain this man that you are maintained. You are maintained on a sound reason that he's, you know, fit for the job. That is all that we need. That is why we need what the 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 the, the body that scrutinizes who becomes a minister and all that. Right. So all in all, all that I want to say is that uh, we are watching the people of this country who give them the mandate are watching, and that whatever they take, posterity will judge them, and voters will not hesitate to punish them or reward them, giving uh, the situation on the ground. I want us to wrap this conversation in 30 seconds. So just, just this comment. Professor Peter Kwati of uh, ISA at the University of Ghana says the E-levy should be reduced to 0.5%. Are you in agreement? Uh, what do you think, uh, Doc? I, that has been my position. Okay. Economists and financial experts have said that we needed to purge it between 0 0.5 and 1. And okay. I supported that one from the 1. Because okay. you can never run any meaningful society without the state generating resources to run its affairs. All so right. I was, you know, in support of e levy But All the right. government took it a different position, and that has brought us this way. Let me tie, Thank you. add something to it. V very they briefly, bring back, Very briefly. They should bring to back the toll booth, the toll booth system. Okay. All so right. that the little, little resources that, you know, we are losing, we can also bring them what, uh, to the, the kitty. We need all together to Thank make you. our system Thank you for that solid. point. Collins? 0.5%. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in support of that. In fact, I've articulated that to colleagues of mine. 0 0.5 percent, 1 percent. Then take out the limitations or the restrictions, so that okay, so that it's not just 100 cities yes, and above. No matter the as in above 100 cities. Yes. So we take out the restrictions and bring the rates down. That will bring in more, more, more revenue. That has been my point. Roxy, but there's something very Roxy. interesting here, and he's a he's a he's a lawyer. Collins, said, we have to go. Oh, where a vote of censure is passed mm. against a minister under this article, the president may. Yeah, it's still may. Hmm. Unless the minister resigns his office, revoke his appointment as a minister. It will still come back to Mr. President. So, hmm. it will still come back to Mr. President, which is the point, point. we are making. Point made. Which Rotten is the point Rotten we are making. Rotten Rotten let's go this is the point we are making. 0. 0.5, oh. do you agree? 0.5%, do you agree? Can I finish? 0. 0.5, do you agree? First of all, let me rebut something. Uh, Prof said. Roxanne, we don't have oh, the we time. We have time. We don't have oh, the please, time. Please, No, I, I'm sorry. We no, don't no, have the time. This. this is a show. If we had other things Give me time. I would have. He said. You had more time than no, anybody else. He said NDC today. chicken out during the proposal for the election of the MMDCs. It's not correct. NDC said, pursuant to our constitutional architecture, uh, uh, as unit committee members are not supposed to be involved partisanly. And the, the MPP's proposal was that political parties should be involved. All right, thank you for the That's clarity. That's why we disagree. Thank you for the clarity. So we just let, didn't let, go to, now. Do you agree with 0.5%? We didn't want political parties to participate. Do you agree with 0.5% e-levy? That's what we proposed. All right, that's fine. And they disagreed. We even proposed 1%. They disagreed. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Interesting, that point you made, uh, Collins. In the end, it will still get back to Mr. President. That is what I
Let me say a very big thank you to Dr. Sasante, Kwame Sasante, uh, who is a political scientist at the University of Ghana, also the director for the Center for European Studies, uh, as well as Collins Adomako Mensah, member of parliament for Ifijakwa Red North, member of the Finance Committee of Parliament, and Roxanne Nelson Dafia Mekpo, member of parliament, South Dying, also a member of the Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs Committee of Parliament. Do stay with us. There's a lot more coming by way of conversation on the AM show. We'll also be engaging the Ghana Education Trust Fund. How is the GET Fund faring? How's the fund helping to make Ghana's educational system better? More on that after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back to the AM show. Uh, we've just had an interesting uh, conversation. Well, Benjamin just had an interesting conversation on Ghana's economy. Well, today now we're discussing Ghana's education and we're engaging the education, uh, the Ghana Education Trust Fund Get Fund. How is this fund helping to make Ghana's educational system better? Because it's in charge of vital infrastructure needed to augment the sector. And my guest for today is Dr. Richard Ampofo Bodu, who's the Get Fund administrator and he is here to tell the get fund story doc good morning and thank you so much for your time good morning are you okay you're right yes, yes. all right okay now let, let's let's talk about uh, get fund i mean let's let's go back to 2001 and we talk about get fund and how it operates um the historical uh, background of get fund is that um in 2000, um, the then um, uh, government under the NDC, that mm -hmm. is uh, Jerry Rawlings, mm -hmm. uh, President Jerry Rawlings, um, passed the Get Fund Act, but it was in 2001 yeah. that it was operationalized by the then um, uh, Kufo mm -hmm. government. So it was in August that Get Fund started its operation. Yeah. So if you look at it, um, if it were a child that was born, get fund will be in, it has passed the childhood stage yeah. into the adult stage. Uh -huh. um, so get, get fund, fund is like what, 21 years? 20, um, from 2001, 20. Yeah, tw yeah. 20, 20, my 20, math, 21, 20. Yeah, 20. yeah, yeah my math mm -hmm. is terrible, sorry. 20. Yeah, uh-huh. So, um, uh, the story of get fund has always been told in the political uh, angle. Yeah. It depends on who is trying to say what uh, it is. So if the person has a party A color, he tells it in another way. If mm -hmm. the, uh, somebody has a party B color, yeah. they also tell it in another way. So we decided that uh, this year uh -huh. we're going to engage the taxpayer because it's the taxpayer's money that uh, we are using. Mm -hmm. So we thought that it is better to account to the taxpayer. Okay. So we had a stakeholders meeting that was in um, about um, on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We invited those that matters, that is the vice chancellors. Mm -hmm. We invited the regional coordinating council. Yeah. We invited the district assembly, the chairs, um, uh, the civil uh, society organisation. Yeah. And for the first part that we did about a couple of weeks ago, it was based on the funding aspect of it. Mm -hmm. This part is the infrastructure. infrastructure. Yeah. The last part will be scholarship. Okay. Actually, when you mention get fund, everybody thinks about get fund is scholarship. Yeah. But that is just five percent of our, our receivables. Okay. Uh -huh. So the, the the rest of it goes into infrastructure. Mm. Um, I, 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 any time that you, 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 you just say that you are from get from somebody who's here, eh, ah, scholarship. scholarship, yeah, that isn't it. All right. There's a lot that goes in there. Okay. So now let's, before we uh, dive into infrastructure, I want us to talk about funding because that was the first, you know, the stakeholder, first stakeholder meeting you guys had. And we're talking about the, uh, funding source of get fund, uh, because without the money, you can't get infrastructure and then later then go into the scholarship. So let's talk about your funding sources of Get Fund. Historically, Get Fund um, gets 2.5% mm -hmm. of VAT. Mm -hmm. But in 2017, 
um, it was um, in in 2019. Mm -hmm. It was changed to um, the uh, a straight levy. Okay. A straight levy of 2.5. Sure. There's a difference between the VAT and the straight levy. Yeah. Um, there is something that happened in 2017 to uh, get fund. Yeah. That is the capping and realignment act that presupposes that the 2.5 that is coming to get fund. Not all the money will come, but a percentage is taken by uh, government. Okay. So it means that our uh, total inflow was slashed by that percentage. And it hovers around 40% uh, in a year. I see. So there was a, a, a cut. Okay. And how did that affect you? It affected us because even, even uh, um, the effect was hugely felt on us. Because at that time, when... In 2017, um, the mandate was given to me to come and say, mm -hmm. there were about uh, IRS old contractors to a tune of about 830 million. Mm -hmm. That aside, there were projects that were ongoing. We call it the commitment. Mm -hmm. Even with that, with the, the money that was coming to us, if we had even folded our arms and then said that we're going to use that money to pay contractors for them to complete the existing infrastructure. Yeah. They have taken us six years without doing anything, yeah. any additional thing. So that was also a second fa factor. Yeah. And then there were, um, the third one was when the free SHS policy was launched mm -hmm. and get fund had to play an important role in it. Of course. I just sat in the office and I said, wow, what yes. is happening to the fund? Yeah. Because all these things are in there. I had a daily visit of about 70 in a day contractors coming on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. They come and then tell their story of how they are suffering. I, 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 I said it yesterday. I quite remember this thing. Mm -hmm. There was a time that somebody came to my office just leaving the office he collapsed hey because he was hungry or what no that was the the, the tension that he was going with the oh. stress i had to take him to the whole clinic paid for yeah and there are a lot of contractors that were crying there were also um legal threats oh. at that time and the capping I've already told you about it. Yes. Yeah. You needed more, but already, already it's been slashed. It's yes. Been slashed. Right. So you, you speak about the contractors coming to your office. Obviously, if contractors are coming to your office, that means infrastructure is not being completed. But before I get to the infrastructure parts, my last question on the funding sources. Uh, earlier this year, ranking member on Parliament's Education Committee, uh, Peter Nochekoto, said that the government had not provided any money to the uh, GETS Fund since July 2021. Um, any updates on that? What has been, what has anything changed? Um, there, there is releases from uh, finance, but okay. um, it's, it's not uh, what we expected. Okay. Presently, I think the last check that we, we did uh, up to July. That yeah. was the release that they gave out to July. Mm -hmm. They were owing Get Fund about uh, 700 million Ghana cities in oh. Irish. When, when was this? That was the July 2022. Yeah. That's 700 million. Yeah, over 700. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so what's the story with that? We're still waiting or what? Um, it's supposed to come, but okay. uh, you know the challenges that lies yeah. ahead. I'm afraid. Okay. All right, now let's get into the infrastructure. Um, let's talk about some of the activities that you have uh, done, some of the stuff that you have done in terms of infrastructure. Um, in terms of infrastructure, uh, we did, an, when uh, I resumed the position, mm -hmm. data was very hard to get. Even getting uh, the numbers that we had on the ground. Mm. So we did an infrastructure audit around that time. And then we found out that um, we had about, uh, close to about 7,000, the figure is there, mm -hmm. uh, 7,000 projects that get found since its inception has been able to initiate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 
Actually, and, and, sorry, is it initiates and complete or just no, initiates? No, just initiated. Some, okay. they were at various stages. Okay. Some completed, okay. some at various levels. Okay. Well, but we had to know our, uh, the base, what actually get fund has done. Done and so far. Actually, mm. that helped us in even uh, our ability to even uh, spend our money and mm. then program whatever we, we, we're doing. Yeah. Um, for now, an extra um, 2,000 and so has been added to it. So we have the infrastructure audit gave us 7,195. Okay. Um, but we've added some to it and we are in the region of uh, 9,400 and four, uh, four, 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 uh, six yeah, okay. projects. Yeah. Yeah. These are the, the breakdown. Uh, gives us about um, uh, 5,332 for basic school, mm -hmm. uh, 3,396 for secondary, 101 for the e-blocks. We, we just want to separate the e-blocks because of its, um, uh, the brouhaha about the e-blocks. Mm -hmm. And then we've also commenced a new uh, nine um, model schools. School, yeah. yeah, nine model schools of which seven was built from scratch and then um, two of them an upgrade yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay so uh, let's talk about the e-blocks uh you said <laughs> by the end of 2022 you would have completed 20 e-blocks uh we are pretty much at the end of 2022 uh how far worth that yeah the um the problem with the e-blocks mm -hmm. um uh, yesterday uh, and uh, today let me uh, we've paid all the contractors on the e-blocks we are not owing any In contractor contractor. on the e -blocks. Mm -hmm. but the problem is that it is not economically viable for them now for them to go and then continue okay because it's, it's a business that they are doing mm -hmm. and in terms of the business angle with price escalation and all those uh, factors. Mm -hmm. After paying them, they are not going back. Okay. So what we have to do was for us to revise the rates and then when approval is given, mm -hmm. then they go back to site. Once they see that it is economically viable, yeah. then they can go back to, which we've done, and then we sent it to the ministry. It is undergoing the procurement processes and we hope to. It's most uh, 21 of them are above 70 percent. Okay. So one is it gets quick start. Uh, in a matter of maximum two months, they should be able there to finish. Be. Okay. So 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 what's the deal? You're waiting to get some more funds so that you can no, pay the contractors, no, or what exactly? We we have funds for that. We've, okay. We've programmed it. Because you're saying that okay, so you paid them mm -hmm. right? Let's say you paid them 100 mm -hmm. CDs, mm -hmm. yeah, and then they're saying that it's not economic viable for them right now. Mm -hmm. In the next two months, mm. okay, so and then you uh, presented some sort of a, you know, budget so that it can be more easier for, it can be easier for them, right? In the next two months, three months, you said that maybe, okay, you give them 100 cities and then you said that, okay, 150 now is the plan, yeah? But in the next three months, maybe 300 cities might be needed. Yeah, that so, is, uh -huh. let me, let me, let me, let me, um, yeah, we, we, we always give a budget with, uh, some sort of allowance allowances. okay that's what we do and in their type of contract mm -hmm. it is fluctuation based contract fluctuation is an index that compensates the uh, the contractor mm -hmm. if it uh, prices goes up to a certain extent but there are in cases that when you use the uh, fluctuation yeah. it doesn't uh, commensurate the increase and that is where you have to use the rate revision. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. now let's let's talk about um, wine infrastructure audit reports on your projects, and what were some of the findings? Huh. For the infrastructure, um, the data for yeah. one that I've said, and then two, um, we there were some of the projects that we saw that um, they didn't exist. Okay. Yeah. So for them. Uh, the reason for when you say didn't exist, you mm -hmm. mean they are not there, like in the in the get fund books, it is stated That's that right. the project, uh, the the award the award letter has been given to. Okay. The, uh, but um, you go to the ground and there is nothing, nothing there. 
There, there was a reason for that. Tell me. Yeah. It's possible that, that, that it, let me give you just one reason. It's mm -hmm. possible that the award letter was done at Get Fund, mm -hmm. but the awarding body, that is the awarding body, so the, the letter that should initiate the process was given to the awarding body, mm -hmm. but it never materialized. So that is one thing. Yeah. At Get Fund, we just waited to see if any of them will suffice in the, per, uh, in the form of claim. Uh -huh. But all of them, nothing came. So for that, there isn't any worry about. Yeah. But one thing that came in is um, the, the you, you can see that there were some infrastructure defects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I saw that. A lot of them, about three to, uh, about 300 and, and plus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for them, there were some of them that needed complete demolition. Okay. Some of them, they, they were asked to go back and then fix, fix them. So what was the problem? What, like we build these schools and then we leave them to rot and then we spend money. It's not like we build them like, you know, for one city. We spend money and then after that, we have to demolish them and pump in some more money. So what is the problem? No, there are some of them. It is the, let me, let me explain this to uh -huh. you. Get fund. We don't give contract. We just do the funding aspect of it. Okay. Mm? Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, I'll come to that, but uh, what we've put into place in order to make that shortfall, uh, we, we, we try and then uh, polish those ends up. Yeah. But we don't give contract. So what happens is an entity does it on our behalf. Okay. That is the Ministry of Education, the Regional Coordinating Council, the district assemblies and then at the tertiary level mm -hmm. it is the various institution that does a true uh, ghana technical education sure. commission so they are the ones that are supposed to monitor mm -hmm. and then they do so through consultancy so the consultants are our agent on site okay do you get it yeah they are, they are our agent on site yeah it so happens that some of the consultants um they they don't do what is necessary for them to do but as people who are funding and pumping money into this are you not worried about this yes that uh -huh. is that is what i'm, I'm talking about mm -hmm. what used to be in okay the past. and okay. we put measures there are, there are a lot of complaints that i can put across yeah. that i i came to meet but um i quite remember the first time that we met the president he said that we've been appointed to your agencies and your various places to go and then fix the problem mm -hmm. in there. I can talk about the problems that were existing and I can tell you what we've put into place. Yeah. So for that, it was the monitoring aspect that was missing. Sure. Hither to me coming to get fund, yeah. there was a project department packed with um, QS, quantity surveyors. Uh -huh. They were just going through the vetting process. Mm -hmm. So they make sure that the quantities that we've put in, okay. it comes out clean. They do the auditing and everything before we pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That does not solve the problem that we had. So we had to expand that in trying to incorporate it and then brought it, renamed it mm -hmm. and, uh, as the project monitoring and evaluation. I so see. that was the missing link. Okay. So we took, we, we brought in, um, um, uh, apart from the quantity surveyors, mm -hmm. civil engineers, sure. uh, architects, okay. um, those who've done uh, uh, project management. Uh, so that was, that was it. So, um, and then to cure that, get fun was only, uh, situated in Accra alone. Mm -hmm. Now we have zonal offices in Accra that looks at the southern zone. Okay. We have one in uh, Kumasi that looks at the middle belt zone. Yeah. And then we have one in Tamale. Okay. This concept came in from something that we, uh, I saw who in, um, watches the watchman. Okay. So now those that are in the process, get fund can go and then monitor them. Sure. And I tell you, when we quick start this, the quality of the projects that we're getting are amazing. Yes. Are super. Yes. Okay. And that's all thanks to you.
no to my man, <laughs> my management and, and my board. <laughs> All right, okay. So uh, still on infrastructure, let's talk about the challenges. I mean, apart from the fact that some had uh, infrastructure had to be demolished and other stuff, let's talk about some of the um, challenges you faced. Um, for the challenges, let me. We we have to understand. Uh, what was existing okay. in order for us to know uh, how we tackle it. Sure. So let me begin with the Ministry of Education, which is also uh, those that uh, award on behalf of Get Fund. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, there wasn't cooperation between the Ministry and Get Fund. Sure. So what happens is you go, we can go to a school, and then you will find out that Get Fund is building. Uh, a girls' dormitory borough. Mm -hmm. At that same school, the ministry is building a dormitory block for the girls. Okay. It so happens that the request came for, uh, some to get fund, some to the ministry. To the ministry. And then they awarded it. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't that coordination. Mm -hmm. So what happens is there are more that were done. The prices were not even the same. Yeah. Those built by get fund were different by those built by the ministry. Mm -hmm. And it so happened. And this continued for a very long time. And then it brought about multiple projects mm. that were going at the blind side of the funding agency. I see. I see. Uh, a lot of you go, you just take your camera. This building has not been completed. It's a get fund project. Mm -hmm. We give the funding, but they do what? They, they do it. The they do the, the, the and awarding. The yeah. That is it yeah. for, for the Ministry of Education's point of view. Sure. Then you come to the district assembly, uh, they also do whatever they have to do in there, give award more above the budget. So there were a lot of them scattered yeah. in there without the recourse to the funding um, uh, body. The regional coordinating councils do the same thing. Mm. But with the tertiary sector, that is where my interest is because they have the huge uh, infrastructure it so happens that uh, GTEC, that's the Institute of Ghana uh, Tertiary Education Committee, they mm -hmm. regulate and then do the, uh, the disbursement or have, uh, on allocation on behalf of Get Farm. Mm. Initially, um, the, let's, let me give this example. Mm -hmm. For instance, Legon, 5 million is given to Legon. In that year, Legon decide that they are going to build a lecture theater. Mm -hmm. The following year, five million is given to them. Instead of them using the five million to complete or push it into the lecture theater, yeah. they try that, oh, I'm going to build another one. Procurement, there's nothing wrong because it can tell us where the funding source is coming from. Mm. So what happened was multiplicity of projects in the tertiary uh, phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go to a school like Legon, you see that they have about uh, five or six get fund mm -hmm. projects going mm -hmm. on. Remember that it is the same allocation that goes there uh, and then they divide it. One problem with that is that even if the contractor has the capacity mm. to complete, because it is an allocation that has been given to uh, the contractor, he can go up to a, a, a certain amount, maybe if he's, uh, they split it one million, one million, one million, yeah. it means that the year the contractor can do only one million. Ah, uh, okay. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it happens that when pro um, projects mm, mm -hmm. are delayed and then it goes into multiple years, fluctuation sets in mm -hmm. because that compensates the contractor. And then when it gets to a certain time, you see that. The BOQs are not the current one, so they have to revise the rate. Sharp. They revise it, they don't tell their fund, yeah. they go for CTRC, it is approved, and then they bring the certificate to get fund. Uh, so it looks like this systematic milking of get fund has affected the fund in subsequent years. So when I came into the, um, all that I did for the tertiary sector was to put a hole to all new contracts at the tertiary sector. Okay. Mm? Yeah. That manage it for a while. So that the money that we give you, use it for the existing 
infrastructure. Finish that first. Finish that up. Yeah. You see that it has a financial implication. I give you five million, mm -hmm. and then you go and they raise it, raise it. I'm telling you, there is um, a university in Ghana. I don't want to mention sure. it. They have a project of 90 million Ghana cities. Their allocation, as I check, in 2018 was 1 million. I see. So how many years? If everything remains the same, the same. how many years do you think that that project will be completed? I, I see. You see? Um, Me and you, we, yeah. we, we, our children. And we, our children. We, we, children yeah, and, that is it. But yeah. they, when they go, they will not say that that university is building and it's being stalled. But the story, the narration will be, Get Fun has, mm -hmm. that is it. Get Fun Everywhere that you go, it, is, it, is, it yeah. is Get Fun infrastructure that they say. That is a story. Mm -hmm. So, and that is why you're here to tell yes. your side of mm -hmm. the story. Yes. Yeah, that, that you've is. been trying to, you know, uh, close the holes the in the, holes in the system. Okay. Yeah. So for this particular one, yeah. we have to solve it. What I did this year was to go with the board's approval, mm -hmm. is to go to uh, parliament. Mm -hmm. And then I had a plan, a three-year plan, mm -hmm. to complete about 80% uh, 80 of them. My target is 100%, but I know that the Ghanaian contractor, it will not be achievable. Mm -hmm. If I'm able to get about 80%, mm -hmm. I think that that will be a success uh, uh, story for me. And in this, we are not going to give the universities allocation mm -hmm. for those contracts, the legacy contract. Yeah. For new contracts, we might do that. But even with that, there are a set of rules that we have to go through in order to assess the new ones that we're going to give. So for the legacy projects that we took, what we are saying is that there is a pool of money that has been set aside. Mm -hmm. For you, the contractor, to go on site and work to your capacity. If you're able to work to your capacity and then you bring the certificate, mm -hmm. we pay and sure. then you go back. So it will not be that uh, allocation that restricts contractors' ability to uh, do what they can do. But, <clears throat> so would it not be like, so a contractor does to the best of their ability mm -hmm. and then they come back to mm -hmm. you, will they not like be... I don't know. Will you not get out of your budget? No. Okay. It is a pool. Okay. So when it gets finished, then the following year, we set up another one. Okay. Yeah, we go to parliament. Okay. Fine. But we have a three-year plan. Okay. So we, we know this year, for instance, uh, 630 million out of our... Instead of us using that allocation mm -hmm. to do new contracts, yeah. my idea is it is a constitutional mandate for us to continue ongoing projects. Yeah. But it has happened that any government that comes in, try to do uh, a flagship project and then forget about the old ones. We are saying that, fine, there are some of the flagship projects that we can do, but a chunk of it should be used to for, uh, complete the, the Buildings, projects yeah. that has been left in the bush. Yeah. yeah, that is it. So that is the plan. And with the three-year plan, the first approval has been given. Okay. Next year, if I go to parliament and that amount that I put forward is mm -hmm. given, I hope that in three years, a lot of these projects will be completed. So this, your three-year plan has been met with, you know, some happy faces? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All, of, all the, the, the um, I went to parliament and then there was a unanimous um, support for okay. that. They congratulated me for okay. us putting in this, this, um, this um, initiative. initiative. Yeah, that is it. Well, we hope that that three-year plan doesn't just stay as a plan. Mm. It is executed. Yes. And executed well. Uh, but let's talk about the 3.42 billion Ghana cities uh, that you raised from your loans and bonds. Yeah, that is one thing too, that uh, there's a misconception and then people say it uh, the way that they like it. Okay. Of late, you hear a lot of the politicians, and then and they've made to believe that that is the fact that Get Fund has gone onto the market and then received one point five billion dollars, and that one point five billion dollars it's has been spent. Okay. Get Fund. Where is it? 
It is, it is not 1.5 billion. Approval was given to get uh, forget fund mm -hmm. to go onto the market and borrow 1.5 billion in three tranches. 1.5 billion dollars in mm -hmm. three tranches. Okay. At the time that we went to the market, it started as a loan facility, but it was very difficult for us to, to get it. So we had to switch it onto a bond market. And for the bond market, Security and Exchange Commission approved 5.5 billion Ghana cities. Mm. Mm. At that time, the dollar was 5.5. So that is about $1 billion. But the actual fact is we are borrowing cities, not dollars. Mm. And it is not being borrowed outside the country. You can hear people say that they've gone, they, they've get found has been mortgaged for $1.5 billion mm. and it was uh, a Chinese uh, government or Chinese company or Chinese something that gave us uh, everything is being sourced in Ghana. Yeah. Let me give you um, form because there has been argument about the securitization. Sure. They are saying that there wasn't a need for us to go and then borrow. One, I told you that the contractors, hmm, mm -hmm. about 830 million were there. We have to pay them. Yes. So that is one, the debt that we had to pay. Two, there were the legal aspect. The debt fund was, uh, as a result of that, there was a legal risk that we had to face. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of contractors trying to take us to, to court. To court, yeah. The third one is, and that is my favorite uh, thing that I chance on. A research that was done by the Building and Road Research Institute of Ghana. And what are they saying? And they say that in Ghana, in order to complete projects, mm -hmm. hmm, you spend an extra 40% to complete the project. In that same research, it said that for the public sector, it is even worse. Mm -hmm. But let's try and then do our argument based on the, four, uh, the 40%. Yeah. Okay. So what I did was to go to my board and then got that approval. There, we took it to um, cabinet, cabinet approved, yeah. and then we came to parliament. With that, I can't remember that argument that I, with that, if we're able to go and then borrow mm. at even around 20%, and then we complete the projects within the time frame that uh, we, we want to complete, yeah. we'll be making a savings of about 20%. Uh, percent. Mm -hmm. Do you get, do yeah. you get the math? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this 20% mm, that we're getting, yeah. that will be our savings. Apart from us paying the contractors for them to go back to site mm, and then finish the projects that we are doing, the free SHS infrastructure deficit, because that was the fourth point, there was a high gap in the infrastructure um, um, ga gap for the secondary school, the free SHS. So if a uh, journalist and then the cameraman will mm -hmm. rightly uh, tell the truth, yeah. when they reopened school, they went there and then they saw that uh, when the free SHS, mm -hmm. the following year when they started, mm -hmm. they found out that most of them, they had somewhere to stay. That story didn't come that, oh, this year the students are that, 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 that. We're working, we're working undergrad. So we, we did that and for the first time in Ghana, for every um, hundred, uh -huh. hundred building that we, bu we built, the 20% came as free. That's so it. It, was a, it was a free goodie to uh, get fund and for the government. That's the savings, 20% going free. free. That is it. I and see. then there was also um, cost rationalization, mm -hmm. where the projects that we did from 2017 were cheaper in terms of cost than projects that were awarded before 2017. Yeah. So these are these are the pluses that we can say that we instituted around that time. Another magic that also worked was mm -hmm. to make sure that contractors are paid timely. And my sister, I'm telling you, during that period, from 2017 mm -hmm. up to 20. December 2019. Uh -huh. hmm? Yeah. I'm telling you, something happened in Ghana that has never happened before. Tell me. Contractors build, they bring their claims to get fund. Yeah. In a matter of two to three weeks, they get their money and then they go back. I see. It happened.
for almost two years. And contractors will tell you, for almost that, that, that period, yeah. they get it and then they go. And then they go and continue. So that was 2017 to 2019. Yes. Yeah. So from, from 2020. Yeah, 20. I'm coming. Uh -huh. We paid contractors their IRS. And even fast forward, paid all contractors to 2019 uh -huh. for the legacy projects. I see. We paid everything. So as I'm speaking right now, there's no contractor that we owe from 2013 mm -hmm. up to 2019 uh, November. Okay. We paid all the, uh, um, the, the money that we owe them. Yeah. We paid. So we did pay the 830 and then fast forward up to... Tw uh, 2019. It was after the COVID mm -hmm. that things started getting hard. I see. But even with that, we haven't stopped. There is a funding mix that we're using. And for that funding mix, mm -hmm. I'm telling you that now, mm -hmm. as of today, the contractors have gone to sign innovation mm -hmm. agreement. When they do the innovation agreement by the SPV that we set up from the bond, mm -hmm. when they do that, in a matter of two weeks, they get paid. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. get paid. They know. But, okay. And uh, um, it started, the payment started uh, this week. Okay. And all the projects that we've awarded, we've paid as, as at 30th, um september yeah 30th september yeah every ipc that came to get fund at our accounts office all basic schools captured all secondary schools captured, captured. and all tertiary from the areas up to september mm -hmm. we've also done that what is left is the basic and then the secondary that is in the um the um legacy projects projects yeah those, right. are, those are the ones that are left okay. not paid. All right, Doc, mm. this is your story, yes. and you told it well. Yeah. Uh, so when is the, the last uh, stakeholders meeting? Um, we're planning in December oh, to in do December. The, the, the scholarship aspect oh. of it. Okay. But uh, one thing before I leave, uh -huh. for us to know the project, since 2017, two, yeah, 2017 about 2000, 259 projects have been completed okay. because of the funding mix that we implemented. Okay. And so far, um, I said about 9,446 plus yeah. has been that. Apart from the infrastructure, that's the physical infrastructure, mm -hmm. the nine model, the one that you see uh, at the back screen, mm -hmm. is a school at Passing Bay. We have Where's seven Passing of them. Passing Bay in the um, north, in okay. the northeast. Okay. We have this model school, mm -hmm. STEM school. We have seven of this. It's a built from scratch. I see. Yes, this is a from Get Fund, funded by Get Fund. So oh, that's that's only, lovely. Yeah. So you said you have seven of this. Seven of that. In the in the north. Yes, but north this east. this this is the one. I think two of them are at this stage, uh -huh. but uh, the other five are at various stages. stages. But all of them are above uh, seventy percent. Okay, yeah. so so uh, when can we look forward to them like being fully operational? Uh, this academic year. Okay. Some of them, I think the um, the um, the Abomusu one, uh, I think it will be operational. But for the, this two, this academic year, it will it will be. Okay. Apart from apart from this, if mm -hmm. uh, quickly I can sure, I sure, can sure. do that. Um, if you go through um, the districts, you see that we've given all the districts. Um, uh, pickups. Pickups, yeah. Yeah, there was a distribution of pickups to the district directors, the circuit officers to rebuild. Uh, we gave them uh, uh, motorbikes mm. for them to do their work. Uh, we can also talk about the buses. Yeah. You see, Get Farm branded buses donated by Get Farm. And there's okay. a lot of them. And then furniture too, we're spreading it all over. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Richard Ampofobredu, you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, we look forward to seeing more completed uh, infrastructure. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Dr. Richard Ampofobredu is the Get Fund 
administrator. You're still tuned into the AM show. But let me tell you about water. Uh, water is life. It regulates your body temperature and keeps you alive and kicking. Awake is premium purified water treated through a strict purification process to ensure that every bottle on the market refreshes you better. We have the perfect sizes for all occasions. 330ml, 500ml bottles to fit your pockets and bags and 750 ml for the heavy drinkers and 1.5 liters for those who always want more now we've also introduced our special 19 liter jar for offices and homes now you just need to stay awake with awake purified drinking water wherever you go come on grab a bottle of awake water and get quality hydration away purified drinking water one for life remember for every bottle you purchase an amount is donated to the national cardiothoracic center and is produced by casa preco for bulk purchase you can please call 026-235-1251 the number is 026-235-1251 one two five one this advert is fda approved after this break we host electro land you don't want to miss it Back to the AM show. It's uh, the festive season is approaching, and you know we want to shop, shop, shop for all our Christmas uh, gadgets. So I'm going to introduce the innovative HD Plus model that allows users of NASCO TVs to access the HD Plus service without the need. For a decoder this new hd plus device will be bundled with new nasco tvs available in electroland outlets across the country and it's come just in time so buyers of new nasco tvs can enjoy the season's live football games on hd plus channel 150 in high definition picture quality without the need for a decoder for more on this i am joined by kuvome Who's Wisdom? Wisdom Kuvame, right? Hello. Yes, Hello. who's our marketing representative at Electroland Ghana. Wisdom, how are you? I'm fine, Mab. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the TV and where we can get it uh, bundled with the CL Plus, right? Yes, please. Okay, tell us what. CI Plus. CI Plus. Yes. Please. Okay, the CI Plus is what? The CI Plus is just the name for this decoder. I'm okay. Having here. Okay. So it's a. Um, just like the decoder, uh -huh. the traditional HDI plus. Yeah. But this one is here to replace that decoder. Okay. So you just take your decoder off, uh -huh. you put your satellite connection into the TV directly, and then you slot this behind the TV. Ah, let me see. So okay, so this what you take this out? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Show me. Okay. Because so, I mean this this is this is nice and yeah, cute nice and portable. And okay. Very portable. All right, so what? So I take this yes. and I slot it into my uh, television. Yes, please. Yeah. So this is compatible with some TV models mm -hmm. and they are all NASCO TV models. Okay. Yes, please. We have the 32 inches, uh -huh. 43 inches, uh -huh. and then the 50 inches digital satellite. Mm -hmm. And then we have smart 50 inches, 55, 65, and 75 inches. Okay. Yes. So, like, I buy this. Mm -hmm. Will you come to my house to install this? Because I don't, I'm not very, you know, I don't understand this technology. Okay. So, will you help me to install it or what? Okay. So, uh -huh. like we said, this is bundled with the TV. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Oh, it's on promotion. Yes, yeah. So, when you buy the TV mm -hmm. with a sticker on it, when you go to uh, show you. Okay, I see. Yes, please. The um, promotion is called You Are a Champion. You Are a Champion. Yes, please. It's right. aimed at boosting the football Philly Philly experience Ah. Uh, D Plus. Okay. So when you buy the TV, this is in it. So you have to activate this mm -hmm. by dialing the short code star 879 hash. Okay, so it's star 7. Code. Star 879 hash. Okay. And then you follow the prompt. It will ask for the first six digits. Mm -hmm. And then you put that in. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. it will ask for the next six digits and then that's right behind it yeah you put it in so you confirm and then you get a text message that you have activated your model mm. now you need to set up your tv your nasco tv yes and then you slot this in to decrypt all the channels with keys on it ah uh, so you see that some that of legal? the channels have keys on it why do they have keys they are scrambled they are uh, oh. locked so this decrypts I, those channels so you guys have the keys to the locks this is the key to this the is locks. the key to yes, the lock yes. okay so uh if i'm you know interested and i want to contact you guys how can i do that all right um you can reach us on email mm -hmm. that's at info at electroland gh .com. Mm -hmm. and then we also have a phone number uh -huh. that you can call yeah that is zero two four two okay four three mm -hmm. nine eight seven two i'll go over that again mm -hmm. zero two four two four three nine eight seven two okay or you just send an email you make the subject request or mm -hmm. inquiry okay and then you send it to info at electrolandgh.com and oh. we should reply to you all right you know that uh, times are very tough in the country mm -hmm. Transport fares are going up, yeah. food is going up, yes. you know, everything is going up. Um, and you said this is a promotion. This is a promotion. So how much does it cost? Okay. Um, quickly, let me get you that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for these models that are on promo now, we are having... Um, one second. Okay, no problem. Just, you know, we want to find out. Oh, you can, you can keep on yeah, looking sure. for the uh, prices because, I mean, if you're saying you're doing a promotion and you're saying that be the champion or oh, what, what is it? You are a champion. You are a champion. You, are a champion. you people must also champion nice prices. Don't be giving us a expensive things. So how much is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So while you're trying to get it, no. Okay. Okay. No. Problem. <laughs> All right, so uh, to get the prices for this, you can visit uh, the Electroland across uh, the country. You can also call them. Give us the number again. 0242. Uh -huh. One second. No problem. It's okay. okay. Yeah, but so, you know, it allows NASCO TV users. So this one allows NASCO TV users to access service without the decoders. You know, if like you're someone like me, you like your apartment very nice and neat. The decoder doesn't really make it nice and neat. So if you just slot this into your television and then you'll get uh, Joy News, you know, you'll get Joy Prime, you'll get Adom TV. And also we're 10 days uh, to the World Cup. So all of the exciting uh, games, you can watch it just by slotting it into your television set. Yes. But if they want to call you, how do they call you? They have to call us on 0242-439872. This is the HD plus number. Mm -hmm. But if you want to call EGL itself, mm -hmm. you need to call on 050-315-9739. Okay. I'll go over it again. 050-315-9739. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, someone who's watching from home just asked me, what is the difference between the HD plus model TV and like the ordinary TV they already have? Okay, you mean the TV? Yeah, yeah, so the HD model, yeah. What's the what's the difference? Okay, the, it, this is just to replace the decoder. Okay. But this also has a special feature that mm -hmm. is the 4K channel. I see, 4K yes, channel. 4K channel. Okay. It's called Event 4K. Okay. So when you are able to decrypt and then your TV is a 4K TV, mm -hmm. you get to view that particular TV in H, uh, 4K quality. Mm -hmm. So, and that TV is going to be showing the last three matches. Oh. Semi-finals and finals for the World Cup. For the World Cup. Yes, please. In oh, okay. Age, that's nice. That's super nice. So, so you feel like you are in Qatar. Yeah, you feel like Aish. you're in Qatar. <laughs> <laughs> Qatar Bagana. Oh, Qatar yeah. Bagana. Yes, oh, <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, so that, that's some of the promotions you're running for, like the World Cup. Yes. Please. So you are the champion. You are a champion. You are a champion. And also the last three uh, games of uh, the World Cup will be in 4K. Will be in 4K. Yes, and then all you have to do is get, is this. get this. Bundled with a TV. 
bundled with the TV. Yes, please. We are not selling this separate for now. For, for now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what happens if I already have a NASCO TV? Okay, like I said, there uh -huh. are some models that are compatible with okay. this. Okay, okay. So if that model doesn't have the slot behind it, mm -hmm. you will have to go with the traditional HD plus decoder. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Please. But when it has the slot, okay. then you can just switch your light into the tv and then you connect that's all okay so uh do make sure that you go and visit electroland so that you can get your television bundled with your H ci plus that's right your yes. ci plus but then not only in egl showrooms uh -huh. our um how do you call it dealers also okay have them in their stores so not just the e egl showrooms but you can also visit any of our dealers nationwide N nationwide so, yes, yes. okay can you t uh, uh, tell us uh where some of your locations okay in accra we have our main office on the ring road that is just adjacent paloma hotel okay yeah, yeah, yeah. building with samsung yeah yes please yeah yeah yeah. i've seen that it. is the head office okay and then we also have a branch at spintex coca-cola okay we have one at flower pot uh-huh and then also industrial area okay those are like within a crowd mm -hmm. um just to mention a few yeah. we also have kumasi in kasi okay. we have takradi tamale mm -hmm. and um, cape coast okay. among others all right you can visit all these S children. so uh do you have any other promotions going on yes please like what okay we are doing the, the world cup promo uh -huh. which is uh, quite similar to this okay but it's not only for the ci plus uh -huh. that's other products of nasco oh okay yes please okay um tabletop fridges oh um other stuff like washing machines and stuff like that we have all those but then we also have buy one get one free for some nasco products we have popcorn machines coffee makers uh. they are all on buy one get one free Currently. So, as in, like, I buy one popcorn machine and, and get, get another, another one popcorn. One for free. But what will I do with popcorn, like, two popcorn machines? Okay, maybe um, if I'm doing a business. Yes. Yeah, okay. What else is buy one, get one free? Um, I can't remember all of them, but blenders, irons. Blenders, um, irons, okay. Toaster. Toaster. Popcorn machine, okay. coffee maker. All right. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's a great idea because if you're getting, you know, buy one, uh, get one free for your mother or your father, you know, your boyfriend, if you want to surprise him, you know, he doesn't have a, a kettle in his apartment. You can just buy one for yourself and buy one for your boyfriend, husband or whoever you want to surprise uh, this uh, festive season. Wisdom, thank you so much. Thank you. So, so much I'll be coming. Uh, I'll be coming to your store okay. uh, for the buy one, get one free. I'll be Expecting. All right. I hope you'll give me a discount. Where's I them? Will. I will try and give you. No, it's not about trying. You are giving me a discount. Yeah. Okay. Let me say. I'm telling you that you are giving me a discount. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You just come. <laughs> just come. I'll be expecting. You'll be expecting me. Sure. All right. Which branch are you at? At Ring Road. Ring Road. Yes, please. Okay. So, f uh, for the last time, please uh, mention the numbers for us before we leave. The number again. Again. Okay. Yeah. It is zero two zero two four two uh -huh. four three mm -hmm. nine eight mm -hmm. seven two. Okay. Zero two four two mm -hmm. four three mm -hmm. nine eight seven two. Okay. Or if you want to call Electroland itself, zero five zero three one five nine seven three nine. Mm. I repeat that again. Zero five zero three one five nine seven three nine. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, wisdom. Kuvome, who is the marketing representative at Electroland Ghana. You're still watching the AIM show. There'll be more after this. Welcome back to the AM show. This is my favorite part where we get interactive with uh, you guys. Benjamin, it's been a fantastic show. 
Let's see what people are saying on social media. Oh yeah, yeah. Perhaps. Let's find out, especially as we're talking about that motion of censure. How is it going to go? Let's get to the TV wall, find out what people are saying. All right, so we asked you, what do you make of the minority's call for finance minister Ken Oforiata to be sacked? And let's see what some of you guys had to say. Hamza, Junior De Maestro, who's a top fan, says very good call and Ken should be uh, arranged for arranged before okay, arranged for prosecution before the man has Okay, cause so much harm to Ghanaians and Ghanaian economy. Okay. And then we also have uh, Kuseli who says it's a right call, but it shouldn't end with him. I believe there are many unpatriotic Ghanaians like him who must be shown the exit. Falcon says, I thought majority started. The caption should uh, say parliament or both minority and majority. Okay, thank you. Echo Arthur says, the minority can't exclude themselves from this mess. The, uh, these allegations were there, but you went ahead and vetted all of them. You are part of where we are now okay is he performing while baba fuseni is asking that is the question we should ask well maybe he came to serve his family and not the country um uh, jeremiah benz thinks that we should sack and uh rest him but we also have another story on 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 facebook uh that we'll try and get that we'll try and get um there okay so if we can just uh, close this um okay it's been a while i don't use facebook a lot anymore uh so excuse the technical difficulties but uh benjamin would you like to tell us about that story well uh, we, we have one where the ashanti regional minister simon assayment apparently spotted this gentleman a cocoa farmer uh, who spread his produce out on a street like on a yeah. road mm -hmm. drying it and the ashanti regional minister uh, had quite a reaction for him in fact uh, just to get to uh, maps if yeah. you could go uh -huh. up a bit so it says that one of the residents on the scene complained that they would not remove the beans because the road wasn't being used for illegal mining to warrant such a directive from the minister. That, that part was rather interesting. So basically saying, go ahead and deal with Galamsey and leave, and me leave alone. us alone. Yeah. But what are some of the comments? All right, let's reactions? go to uh, John who says, because the economy isn't going on with this current government, doesn't mean you should disrespect and disobey our leaders. Whether we like it or not, they are our leaders. Put some respect. Okay, uh, King Kala says, uh, this guy expects him to channel his energy into the fight against Galamse Mom. I'm sure that road was built with cocoa money, but the Galamse people are enjoying more than the cocoa farmers. Elom says he should use the same energy for the Galamse in his jurisdiction. He is power drunk, according to Elom. Um, at Shadows, uh, Eliasu says, the minister should not pour all his anger on the poor farmer, though he is not doing the right thing. The big question is that, is the minister not aware of funeral events being organized on the streets? What has he done about it? The last two I'm going to take from uh, Ibrahim, who says it's in line. And the fact that there are crimes committed somewhere doesn't mean others should be allowed to commit as well. Take him on. This is not speaking well of a serious country. And the last one from Nana Ajiman, who says they should discipline him. Such nonsense must stop. And Peter Zanku says, those attacking the minister on his action should bow in shame. You're morally corrupt if you question the action of the minister. This is how indiscipline grows to become a canker. And my Peter, uh -huh. so yes, people may have all their thoughts about that situation. And the fact that, yes, Galamse is on the rise and we've not done anything to curb it. But I don't think anyone has the right to do what he was doing. Yeah. Trying right in the middle of the street. Mm. Charlie, that's, that's a bit, that's stretching it. That is stretching, that's stretching it. it. Like I someone's mean. just commented that if a crime is happening somewhere else and you are committing a crime, it doesn't excuse you or it doesn't yeah. make it better. Uh, but it's been a fantastic, fantastic show. It has. Uh, we we'll wait for that debate in Parliament. Yep. We know that it's going to be heated. We know that it's going to be... A lot of things are going to come out of it. And we know that our parliamentary correspondent, Quaker Santi, will bring us all the details. So make sure you stick and stay on this channel. Also on our Facebook and Twitter pages, Join News on TV, for all the excitement and the fire that will be taking place in Parliament. Benjamin? Of course, this is the place to be. But up next, we serve you Joy News Desk, where you get all the information you need. Stay with us as we cede our positions to the Joy News Desk crew. Have a wonderful day.